Hello friends, this is Revenger What Ifs. How are you all? So we are back with an amazing movie on what if Naruto awakens an ultimate Keke Jenke, the Jagan. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. Two boys stood in the center of a dome of mirrors made of ice. The first had black hair and wore a blue shirt and khaki shorts. He had red eyes as a result of his newly awakened blood limit, the Sharingan. He had two tomo in his right eye and one in his left. As a result, he was now able to catch glimpses of his opponent as he passed above them above their heads. He skillfully dodged, volley after volley of Senbon needles, though with each attack two or three would strike him in various places all over his body. He was the pride of Konoha, the last prodigy of the once almighty Uchiha clan. His name, Uchiha Sasuke. The second boy had bright blonde hair, vivid sapphire eyes and wore an orange jumpsuit. He wasn't faring nearly as well as his teammate. He also had three whisker-like birthmarks on each cheek. While he did his best to dodge the Senbon, he was not agile enough, nor could he see the minute needles unlike his partner. He was lucky if two or three Senbon from each attack missed him. He was the bane of Konoha, as well as its number one, hyperactive, unpredictable, knuckle-headed ninja. He was the legacy of the Yandaimi Hokage, the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Kitsune. His name, Uzumaki Naruto. Their opponent was incredibly fast. Sasuke was barely faster than the Nukunin under normal circumstances. Within the dome of ice mirrors he created, Zabuza's perfect tool was too much for them, even combined. Seeing a moment of weakness, the Nukunin concentrated his attack on Naruto. What happened next surprised both boys even more than the sudden shift in their foe's attack. Naruto could only helplessly watch as the needles came closer and closer to him. Strange as everything suddenly started to become clearer. If events hadn't progressed as they did, he might have just dismissed it as his own acceptance of his fate. However, fate decided to intervene, not once, but twice. Before he knew it, he was on the ground, knocked off his feet by his teammate, Sasuke, who now looked like a human pincushion. W.Y. asked a very shocked Naruto. Sasuke had an equally shocked look on his face. I don't know. My body. Just moved. On its own. It was all he could manage to get out before collapsing on the ground. Sasuke. Naruto gasped. The raven haired teen looked up at his blonde teammate. His eyes had gone back to their original onyx color. That man. My brother. I told myself I wouldn't die until I killed him. Sasuke whispered to him. You. Don't die. Sasuke's eyes closed for a final time, his entire body had gone slack. Naruto closed his eyes, trying to hold back the pain. A myriad of emotions ran through his mind. Sadness at the loss of a friend, disappointment in his own weakness, frustration at not being able to defeat their opponent. So many emotions at one time, all ready to burst at any moment. He protected a precious person, while knowing it was a trap, and he still decided to jump in. He was a shinobi that deserved respect said the masked boy. Is this the first time a friend of yours has died? This is the way of the shinobi. Shut up. Was all Naruto whispered. Power, raw untamed power coursed through his veins. First it manifested in a fiery red spiral. The red chakra was fierce, angry. Filled with more malice and hatred than even Zabuza had ever felt and that Kakashi had only felt once before. The seal. Thought Kakashi, has it been broken? That power. No, it's not Kakashi, was the thought that ran through Zabuza's head. Meanwhile, the masked boy watched in horror and bewilderment. Naruto looked directly at him, his vivid blue eyes were now red with untamed fury and the pupils were slitted. I'll rip you apart. That chakra. It's impossible. Chakra can't change like this. The masked boy thought, he was frozen in terror at the radical change Naruto was going through, and such an evil chakra. The red chakra formed a fox above Naruto. The Senban needles that had penetrated various points in his body suddenly shot out of his body, which was shaking in unbridled rage. Suddenly, the wounds all over his body began to heal before the masked boy's eyes. His wounds. They're healing. This boy. What is he? It was what happened next that solidified Naruto's reputation as Konoha's number one, unpredictable, knuckled headed, ninja. Naruto's Hite ite fell off of his head as the sinister red fiery chakra became black and cold, 
yet the black flames seemed to sting with more intensity than the red ones. Even though the chakra had changed again, the whisker marks that had become thicker and more defined had not receded, and his eyes were still blood red and slitted. Kakashi and Zabuza stood rooted in each of their respective areas. Sakura, and even Tizuna, cringed at the changes in the chakra that saturated the air around them. It was incredibly strong. The fact that Tizuna could feel it was a testament to that fact. Sakura was frightened, she had no clue as to what was going on. She couldn't see anyone through the mist, she could barely see Tizuna and he was right next to her. The foreign chakra was far stronger than anything she'd ever felt, it far surpassed anything she had ever felt from either Kakashi-sensei or even Sasuke-kun combined. She was also unsettled by the fluctuations of the feelings the chakra gave off. It could only be felt a little at first. Desperation, fear, hopelessness, and then hate, anger, malice. The feelings came with such intensity that she could almost taste the killing intent in the air. As frightened as she was of it, she was glad that whatever the source, it was not directed at her. However, now the feelings had changed. The hate and anger were still there, but it was more controlled, more lethal and deadly. The killing intent was more focused and no longer felt as it was going to consume everything in the area, however it was still as strong, if not stronger, than it had been a few moments ago. Kakashi's reaction was much different than Sakura's. When he felt the familiar killing intent, he immediately had flashbacks of the Kayubi no Kitsune's attack on Konoha 12 years ago. He had felt the immediate need to deal with Zabuza quickly so that he could deal with whatever it was that had happened to Naruto. Now though, he could only feel bewildered at the familiar feeling the chakra had given off. I it can't be. Kakashi said looking over in the direction that he felt Naruto's chakra coming from. Impossible. One of your students is doing something they shouldn't be able to, eh, Kakashi? Said Zabuza with some amusement in his voice. Na Naruto. Naruto just awakened a Keke Jenke thought to have been wiped out twelve years ago. Said Kakashi, not even bothering to hide his astonishment. Oh and you think it would be enough for him to defeat Haku? Asked Zabuza in a half-amused, half-disbelieving tone. Due to his more unique circumstances, I'd be willing to bet that he'd be able to defeat both of us if he could effectively use its power, said Kakashi. Oh and what could actually give him the power to do that? Asked Zabuza. Although he was curious to know what could cause Kakashi's reaction, he couldn't help but think the copycat Nin was overstating his students' abilities. Then again, Haku took a vested interest in Uzumaki, while the Uchiha hardly caught his attention at all. The Jagan, was Kakashi's simple reply. Two simple words even made Zabuza start having second thoughts about the annoying and overly loud blonde ninja. How can you be so sure? He asked his opponent. The Jagan was famous, feared and above all, respected, even by those belonging to the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist. I've only felt chakra like that in the presence of one other person and it was as unforgettable then as it is now, explained Kakashi, but my sensei never had any other family. He was the only one with the jagan in the village, meaning the only way Naruto could have it. Kakashi's eyes widened at the revelation. Haku watched as the boy in front of him stood up. The menacing aura retreated inside of him, but the killing intent was still thick in the air. It was then when Haku saw it. Naruto's spiky blonde hair began to stand straight up in the front, no longer covering his forehead. Then what appeared to be a slit across it appeared and began to slightly glow. The teal glow became more intense as it got wider. When the slit fully opened the glow subsided revealing a third eye much like Naruto's normal too. It was sapphire blue in color, although it was slightly slitted. You. Will. Pay. He said to the masked nin, still shaking with fury. I'll kill you. Haku took the moment to step back into his mirrors. This sudden burst of power. The lust for battle and blood. He is no longer the same boy I fought before. Haku thought to himself. Suddenly, a huge shockwave of power was released by Naruto. He's coming. Haku thought as Naruto prepared to charge, he sent a small barrage of Senban at the charging boy only to have them harmlessly batted away by the boy's immense power. He barely was able to jump away from the mirror as Naruto shattered in with a simple punch. Haku's visage suddenly appeared in all of the mirrors at once. He was astonished at the boy's newfound speed and even more amazed that his last attack was merely blasted away without a mere thought. As one, all of the mirrors attacked. The Senban embedded themselves deeply into Naruto. 
His third eye began to glow brightly again and the red chakra from before seemed to surround him. Releasing his newfound power, Naruto forced the needles from his body, his wounds instantly healing. The sheer power Naruto was putting out was enough to crack the mirror Haku was in. He immediately charged. A second mirror shattered as Naruto's fist made contact. Haku had jumped from the mirror to one above the Jinchuriki, only to charge at his three-eyed opponent. Naruto seemed to anticipate this and jumped away, he then charged at Haku. The masked boy could barely keep up with the barrage of fists coming at him. Finally Haku managed to score a hit with a spinning kick to Naruto's stomach sending him back a few feet. Haku jumped into a mirror, but had to vacate immediately as Naruto's foot came crashing through. As Haku entered another mirror, he saw Naruto going through a short and unfamiliar combination of hand seals. Gukuden. Inochi Enko no Kobushi, Hellfire Release, Fist of the Mortal Flame. When the sequence was completed, Naruto brought his fist back as it exploded in orange and black flames. Thrusting his fist forward he launched the strange fireball at Haku. It was only basic survival instinct that told Haku to move out of the way, as the mirror he had just been in was completely melted upon contact. The fact the fireball was not stopped by his mirror did not go unnoticed by the ice manipulator. However, Naruto suddenly appeared in front of him, the boy's third eye keeping up a blinding glow. Haku drew a few senbon and threw them at the orange-clad ninja in hopes of removing the boy from his path. Unfortunately for Haku, his opponent seemed to phase out for a moment, the senbon seemingly flying through him. He gasped in surprise, fast. Was his only though when Naruto grabbed his wrist. Before Haku could retaliate, another shockwave of power was released by Naruto. Zabuza san. I'm sorry, but I cannot stand up to his powers. He thought as Naruto started running through one handed seals like Haku had before. Then, his entire arm seemed to burst out in orange and black flames. Gukaden. Inochi Enku no Kobushi. Naruto yelled as he smashed his flaming fist into Haku, who was sent careening through a mirror. As he hit the ground, he bounced five times before landing in a disgruntled heap. Th that power. Surely Naruto can't. Thought Sakura as she heard Naruto's yell. Sasuke-kun. Please be alright. She became even more worried when the strange chakra suddenly vanished. Haku tried to stand, but found he couldn't. He no longer had the energy to do so. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw Naruto approaching, the eye in the middle of his forehead glowing with great intensity. I. I cannot compete with him. Their eyes met and Naruto froze, shock evident on his face, his third eye even quit glowing. His blood red, demonic eyes became sapphire colored once again. Why you? It was then Haku realized the boy's shock. His mask had been completely shattered, and possibly incinerated, in that last attack. You're that guy from before. Images of their meeting in the forest flashed through Naruto's mind. Why did you stop? I killed an important friend of yours, why can't you kill me? Haku asked calmly. Naruto took a glance back at the now shattered mirrors where Sasuke still lay. He closed his eyes, the jagan still focused on Haku. Damn it! He yelled as he kicked Haku in the stomach. The boy only gave a small groan in protest, as he rolled a short distance away from Naruto. Haku spit up some blood as he tried to stand. This time he was successful, but he could barely do so. Where did all of that power of yours go? You can't defeat me like that. Was he not an important person to you? Naruto's emotions were all over the place. He wasn't sure what to think or feel. His mind kept going back to all of the things Haku had said to him before Sasuke had been killed. He was brought back into the present what Haku spoke up once more. There are those who have the wrong idea. They fail to defeat an enemy that needs to be defeated, they show mercy instead and decide not to take his life. If you ask me, doing something like that is not showing mercy. Do you know the pain of living without a dream? Knowing you're not needed by anyone? W what are you trying to say? Naruto asked Haku, knowing deep in his own heart, he already knew and understood what the boy was talking about. He felt though, that he should ask, to acknowledge what the boy was going to tell him. Zabuza San does not need a weak ninja. You stole my reason to exist, Haku explained. Naruto had a pained expression on his face. Why? Why do you fight for that guy? He gets money from bad guys. And does evil things. Is that no brow freak the only important person you have? 
his fists were now clenched and his eyes, with the exception of the jagan, were shut tightly. I had people who were important to me a long time ago, Haku clarified, my parents. He sighed at the painful memories, I was born in the country of water, where the snow piled up deep. All we did was farm and we were poor, but my mother and my father were happy with it. I was happy. They were really kind parents. But, when I first took notice of my surroundings, something happened. Haku looked on sadly. He needed the boy, this, Uzumaki Naruto, to understand. Something. What happened? Asked Naruto, intrigued by the boy's tale. Haku raised his hand. It still had the blood he coughed up on it. This, this blood, was all he said. Blood. Naruto was very confused by the change in subject. So, so what happened? My father killed my mother and then, had tried to kill me. Wh what? Haku then explained the water country's eradication of those who possessed a keke jenke, or bloodline limit, and the significance of having one. After the wars, those families hid their abilities and lived on because only death awaited them if their secret was revealed. That boy, he said pointing to Sasuke, as well as yourself probably have had a tough times as well. Those who possess a special ability are feared by everyone. My mother possessed such a bloodline limit. She had kept it a secret and married my father. She must have believed that an ordinary life would continue for a while, if not forever. Haku remembered when his powers first manifested. Father, found out our secret. Haku's eyes became distant, as if he was reliving the painful memories. Naruto couldn't help but wonder if his own parents were still around, if they would have tried to kill him for having Kyubi inside of him, like Haku's father tried to kill him for having a special ability. When I had came to, I realized I had killed my own father. Haku said in an even voice. At the time I thought of myself as. No I had to think of myself as being. Haku paused for a moment. I realized that that was the most painful thing one could feel. The most painful thing one could feel. Asked Naruto thinking he already knew the answer. He had to know the boy's answer, if only for confirmation. The lost look in Haku's eyes merely confirmed the conviction and truth behind his words. It pained Naruto to see such a look mirrored in the eyes of another. The feeling you are not needed by anyone in this world. It was all it took to send a jolt straight into the core of Naruto's spirit. He's the same, as me. You said to me, I want to become the number one ninja in my village and make everyone recognize me. When someone accepts you from the bottom of their heart appears, that person should become the most important person to you. Zabuza san knew I was from a family with a keke jenke and raised me. He wanted this ability that everyone hated. Tears formed at the corners of his eyes as he remembered when he met Zabuza, the man who had saved him. The man who had given him a purpose. I was happy. For a minute a happy expression came to Haku's face before becoming downcast again. I'm sorry Zabuza-san. I couldn't become the tool you wanted me to become. He whispered and then he walked towards Naruto. Naruto-kun. Please. Kill me. Meanwhile. Kakashi and Zabuza were still at their standoff. Each passing moment since the energy receded, Kakashi had become increasingly worried. He did not know whether or not Naruto had succeeded or not in taking down Haku. The sounds of battle had faded a while ago and he did not know whether or not Sasuke and Naruto were alright. Seems like your boy has run out of steam Kakashi, Zabuza taunted. Zabuza. Let's finish this. One move to decide it all. Kakashi said with confidence, though in truth he was scared that he had let down yet another teammate. He then pulled out a scroll and with some quick movements, unrolled it and twirled it around. Using a sharp point on his Junin vest, he pricked his finger and smeared blood over the seals on the scroll before rolling it back up. He still held it in his hands as the did three hand seals. Ninpu Kuchiyo's Doden, Suga no Jutsu, Ninja Art, Summoning Move, Earth Release. Dogging Fang's technique, he then set scroll on the ground, his hands still clasped to it. Zabuza felt the chakra surging from Kakashi. When nothing happened he figured that Kakashi's technique had failed. Whatever you do, it's pointless. You can't even feel my presence at all. The demon of the bloody mist's voice echoed from every direction, taunting Kakashi. But, I know what you are doing very well, Kakashi. You have fallen into my trap completely. It was then that several dogs burst from the ground attacking Zabuza. Sakura and Tazuna could hear the growling from where they were at. 
WH what is that sound? asked a freaked out bridge builder. What's going on? Sakura asked herself. Both were feeling very uneasy considering they had practically be left in the dark and unable to tell what was going on in either battle being fought around them. If I can't follow you with my eyes or ears, I'll just have to use my nose, said Kakashi calmly as if lecturing a small child. That's what happens when you close your eyes in the mist. This is a summoning technique for pursuing purposes. I stopped your attacks two times, and bled both of those times for this purpose. Your weapons have my scent on them. Those are my cute ninja dogs, and their noses work better than any other dogs. You're the one who has fallen into the trap. The mist has cleared. Your future is death. I don't care about your bluffs, said Zabuza defiantly. Kakashi was right. The mists were clearing, and Zabuza was just feet away from Kakashi and held in place by several of Kakashi's summons. Don't act so tough. There is nothing you can do in this situation, scolded Kakashi. Your death is certain. Zabuza you fooled around too much. Your ambitions were too big. You failed in the assassination of the Mizukaj in the coup d'etat. You ran away with a few of your subordinates and became exiled ninja. Your name was given to the village of Konoha immediately. In order to gather money for retaliation and to avoid the prosecution from the pursuing ninjas you sided with vermin like Gaidu. He said the last word as if it tasted bad in his mouth. Zabuza, do you really think I have survived all this time with just the Sharingan? I'll show you my original technique. It is not a copy. Kakashi did three hand seals and then griped his right wrist with his left hand. Chakra began to gather around his feet when bolts of electricity surged from the ground into his right hand. Rakery, lightning edge, he shouted. What the? I. I can see the chakra in his hands, said Zabuza astonished at the power and level of control that Hitaki Kakashi, the copycat Nin, possessed. You're too dangerous. The person you are trying to kill, Tazuna san, is this country's courage. The bridge he is trying to create is this country's hope. Your ambition sacrifices too many people. That's not what a ninja is supposed to do. Kakashi could see the smirk appear on Zabaza's face through the mask. Who cares? I have fought for my ideal. And that won't change in the future either. I'll say this again. Give up. Ordered Kakashi, the lightning surging in his right palm. His normally lazy, calm and expressionless face was now fiercely glaring at his foe. Your future is death. Please kill me. Pleaded Haku. Worry and indecision had frozen Naruto in place. Why are you hesitating? With each passing moment Naruto felt his resolve crumble. I can't believe that stupid story. He shouted defiantly, as he took several steps away from Haku, weapon? Tool? You call a person like that an important person? You're okay with that? Is it wrong? The sad neutral expression never leaving Haku's face. What? What's wrong with that? But. That's. Zabuza san had hopes for me. He needed me. But. I have lost the purpose that made me. Me. Zabuza san will no longer need me. As Haku continued speaking, Naruto could feel his resolve crumbling, his heart breaking. That is why I am asking you. Now. Hurry. Naruto kun. Please kill me. I. I don't understand. Is staying strong the only reason you have for staying on this world? Naruto tried to reason with the boy. You could have made people recognize you through something other than fighting. A small smile graced Haku's face. The day I met you in the forest, I felt you were like me. You should understand. The look in Naruto's eyes gave away to Haku that he did. I'm sorry I have to soil your hands. Is that, is that, the only way? Yes. Naruto looked down. His eyes were clenched tight, even his newly awakened jagged eye. If I had met you somewhere else, we might have been friends. He then opened his eyes, his resolve hardened. He charged towards Haku, his right hand going to his kunai pouch. Grab hold of your dream. Sasuke had a dream too. Naruto rationalized in his mind as he ran faster towards Haku, his kunai in his hand. Haku closed his eyes. Thank you. You will become strong, he silently thanked Naruto. The mist. It's beginning to settle exclaimed Tazuna. There are two people over there. It looks like they're staring at each other, said Sakura. I can't see very well. Which one is Kakashi Sensei? She asked, one of them moved. Haku caught the movement out of the corner of his eye. He then grabbed a hold of Naruto's wrist before he could strike the killing blow. 
I'm sorry Naruto-kun, he apologized while doing a few one-handed seals. But I can't die just yet. It was then that Naruto saw what Haku did after the ice manipulator vanished. Kakashi charged at Zabuza with a fully charged rakery. So, this is it, huh? Zabuza asked to himself. Suddenly a crack in the bridge opened up, releasing large amounts of frozen air. A mirror of ice suddenly formed and outstepped Haku right into the path of Kakashi's charged palm. Before Kakashi could reach Haku and Zabuza, Naruto materialized and knocked Haku through yet another mirror, placing himself in front of Zabuza, his jagan blazing. Naruto-kun! yelled Haku. Naruto! thought Kakashi as he knew what was about to happen. He couldn't stop. It was too late. Gukaden. Inochi Enku no Kobushi. A powerful shockwave hit Sakura and Tazuna. They had to cover their eyes to protect themselves from the dust and debris from the fights on the bridge. What happened? asked Tazuna. I am possible, shouted Sakura as the figures became visible. Kakashi's reikiri was being blocked by Naruto, whose arm was completely engulfed in black and orange flames, the sleeve of the jacket had been incinerated. Kakashi was staring right into the jagan. While Zabuza was being held fast by half a dozen dogs, suddenly, Naruto shoved Kakashi's attack away from himself and hit the Junin in the chest with a powerful palm strike to the sternum. The blow knocked Kakashi back, but he was able to stay on his feet. Everyone had been so shocked by the turn of events they were speechless. And Naruto! Kakashi yelled after a few moments of speechlessness. What the hell were you thinking? I I couldn't let you. Zabuza maybe, but not. Not Haku. He, like the others, was in complete shock. Naruto. Sakura whispered. Incredible. Tazuna said in bewilderment. Suddenly Sakura's eyes widened in realization. Naruto. You're alright. Where's Sasuke-kun? Naruto kept silent, but then he looked away from her. He couldn't face her. Sakura's eyes then widened again, tears threatening to spill forth. There was a lost look in her eyes. Sasuke. I'll go too. Tazuna whispered to the distraught Kunoichi. That way you don't have to break your teacher's orders. Oh okay. She answered as they both ran towards where Sasuke and Naruto had been fighting Haku originally. Sakura. Kakashi thought. Zabuza used the distraction to free himself from the dogs. You don't have time to look away Kakashi, exclaimed Zabuza drawing his sword and swinging it at Naruto. Naruto was caught off guard and had no time to dodge, when suddenly he found himself tackled to the ground. Zabuza's sword sliced through nothing but air. Haku, exclaimed a very surprised Zabuza. Meanwhile, Tazuna and Sakura had reached Sasuke's body. Seeing him lying there lifelessly, Sakura gasped. Tazuna didn't know the kid very well, but he liked him enough. He also knew how much the girl adored the dark-haired boy. The look in her eyes was the same as his daughter's after Kaiza had been killed by Gedu and his men. She collapsed to her knees and felt his face. Her worst fears had just been confirmed. He's cold. This isn't an illusion, huh? She asked quietly. You don't have to hold back because I'm here, he assured her. You should just cry at a time like this. I always got 100s on all of the tests at the academy. Huh? Tazuna raised an eyebrow in genuine confusion but Sakura just continued on. I memorized more than 100 ideas of the shinobi code and I always wrote the answers down proudly. One day there was this problem on a test. Answer the 25th clause of the shinobi code. And I wrote down that answer as usual. Try as she might to hold them back the tears came anyway. A ninja must not show any emotion in any situation. A ninja must put the mission first and not have a heart that will allow him to cry. She began to cry into Sasuke's chest. This. This is what a ninja is. Tazuna whispered to himself. It's too cruel. Sasuke-kun. Sakura sobbed, before letting out a loud wail. One that tore a gaping hole into Naruto's heart nearby as he closed all three eyes from severe exhaustion. He was vaguely aware of being caught by Haku before he hit the ground. It was near dawn when he opened his eyes again. He let out a small groan, and slowly sat up. I've never felt this weak before. He said aloud to himself as he placed a hand on his head. It's probably a side affect of awakening your keke Jenke, said Kakashi who was leaning against the wall. What? What happened? He asked. Is, is everyone alright? Naruto was hopeful. 
He already knew the answer, but he needed confirmation. Perhaps, if he just wished hard enough, it had just been a nightmare. Wait, what do you mean Keke Jenke? One of those blood things like Haku has. One thing at a time. Answered Kakashi, everyone is alright, even Sasuke. Sasuke is alive. Naruto exclaimed excitedly. Kakashi nodded and Naruto gave him a fox-like grin. Zabuza was killed though. By Gatu's thugs when he showed up after Zabuza killed Gatu, Kakashi informed him. But. Why? Naruto asked. Apparently Gatu had made a habit of hiring missing nins. Then when it comes time to pay them, he killed them if they hadn't already died on the mission he hired them for. Kakashi told him. What about Haku? Asked Naruto. He took Zabuza's death pretty hard, but he is alright for the most part. He hasn't left your room since you were brought here. He'll be coming back with us to Konoha when we leave. He looked over to Haku when he spoke. The boy in question was fast asleep in his chair. Naruto sighed in relief. That's good I suppose. Now what about my blood thingy? Kakashi couldn't help but smirk. While Naruto did have a serious side that was seen by almost no one, he was still the same knucklehead with a one-track mind at the end of the day. It's pretty rare. In fact, at the time of the Kyubi attack there was only one known person who had it, and I have reason to believe he was your father. W what? But that means. Naruto's eyes got wide with excitement until everything Kakashi said, my family died in the attack. I still have to check with the Sandame to be sure, but if I am not mistaken, I am the perfect person to teach both you and Sasuke in Konoha, at the moment, said Kakashi. Why is that? Asked Naruto. In Sasuke's case it's because we both have the Sharingan, and in yours. The man I believe who is your father, was also my sensei, Kakashi said. Naruto's eyes widened again, the excitement that he might find out a little bit about his family was too great. Why your sensei? W who was it? Kazama Arashi. The Yandaimi Hokage, said Kakashi reluctantly. Why Yandaimi? That means, he. Naruto couldn't let himself finish the sentence, Kakashi merely nodded in response. W why? Why me? Kakashi sighed. He really couldn't blame the kid. To find out only a few weeks ago you had a demon inside of you and then that it was your own father who had sealed it there would be too much for anyone. He had to help the boy understand. Think about it Naruto. What does it mean to be Hokage? In his place, would you be able to ask some other family to sacrifice their child, if you saw a chance where your own child could be seen as a hero? Naruto went to interrupt. I know that didn't happen, but that is what Sensei had intended. Naruto was silent for a few moments. I think, I think I understand. Now do you want to learn about your bloodline limit? Asked Kakashi. Naruto said nothing but nodded. As I said before, it's rare. In fact, you are the second person known to have had it. Yandaimi, like you, was an orphan. He had no other family. He was found in the wilderness by a group of our ninja and brought back to the village. It wasn't long after and he attended and graduated the academy. Soon afterwards he became a genin and awakened his bloodline limit. He was able to develop it with the help of his sensei. It's called the Jagan. What does it do? Asked Naruto. Well, when it's activated, a third eye appears on your forehead. Kakashi had to stifle a small chuckle as Naruto felt his forehead. Not even Yandaimi was completely certain of its full potential. But what we did know about it, or rather, what he told me about it, it helped with his chakra control and could sometimes give him boosts of power like what happened to you on the bridge. It can even slow down an enemy's movements based on your own reaction time. It can also give you access to a few techniques that can only be used by you because of the eye. That means not even the Sharingan can copy those techniques. Wow, was all Naruto could say. I'll let you alone for now, but we'll have to talk to the Sandame sama about whether or not Yandaimi was actually your father. Either way, I have something for you that will complement the changes in your fighting style with the eye. I'm sure Yandaimi would have wanted you to have it under the circumstances, whether you're his son or not. Kakashi informed him as he was leaving the room. Thanks, Kakashi sensei. Naruto said with a small smile on his face. One more thing, Naruto. Kakashi paused at the door. The dragon seems to have a mind of its own. While, in a sense, you can control it and is a part of you, it is also sentient and separate from you. It's very prideful and demands respect. All of Yandaimi's opponents who insulted the eye, all died. 
He then left Naruto to his thoughts. The boy had a lot to think about. The country of Wave had a spectacular celebration after Naruto woke. The entire populace was extremely happy with the downfall of Gaidu, except two. While they didn't particularly care for Gaidu, it was another person that was lost the day before that dampened their need to celebrate. Haku stood out on the docks near Tazuna's house staring out at the ocean. He barely acknowledged Naruto's presence. No words were said, the two just sat in silence. When time for the celebrations came, Haku did not go with them, saying he needed time to himself. Naruto and Sasuke didn't stay long either, the former was concerned about his new friend, the latter wanted to get away from his fangirl. It was soon afterwards that the bridge was finished and it was time for Team 7 and Haku to leave. They made one last stop at Zabaza's grave, his sword sticking out of the ground as a sort of headstone. Haku burned some incense and Sakura placed flowers on his grave. I was wondering, Kakashi-sensei, said Sakura, does a ninja really have to be what he said a ninja should be? Haku was now looking at Kakashi in great interest. Shinobi are not supposed to seek their reason to exist. Kakashi explained, it's important that they exist as tools. That idea exists in Konoha too. As he was speaking Sakura walked back towards the others. Haku looked towards Naruto who seemed to be at a crossroads. He was staring blankly over the cliff, a myriad of emotions passing over his face. After a silent moment he came to a decision as he spoke. Does becoming a real ninja really mean that? He asked. It was a simple enough question. One that Haku would have answered. Yes, to immediately only a few days before, yet the blonde boy in front of him made him question whether or not it was true. I, I kind of, don't like that. He had an uncharacteristic frown on his face. Do you think so? Asked Sasuke to Kakashi. Well, no that's why ninja unconsciously suffer from that idea, he answered, like Zabuza did. Naruto stared back at the grave a moment longer, before speaking again. All right, I'm going to follow my own nindo. I'm doing to run straight down the path where I am not going to regret anything. He looked up into the sky as he was speaking, a small genuine smile graced his features. Kakashi looked surprised for a moment but then gave him a small smile that was only visible but the small crinkling of his left eye, which was the only exposed area of his face. Haku also gave Naruto a small smile as well. We've completed the bridge thanks to you, said Tazuna, we're going to miss you guys. Be well, said Tsunami. Thank you for everything, said Kakashi. Don't worry, we'll visit you again one day, said Naruto cheerfully. He no longer wore his orange jacket because it had been irreparably damaged. So he just had on a black t-shirt with the red spiral design on the front and his orange pants. He also wore his Hitai ITE around his neck. He didn't want it to become incinerated once he figured out how to call on the orange and black fire again nor did he want it to cover the jagan. Kakashi sensei had told him that the orange and black flame was called the mortal flame. It burned hotter than any other flame and was often compared to lava from a volcano. To Kakashi's knowledge only the Yandaimi was capable of using the mortal flame because of the Jagan. The Jagan also allowed the Konoha no Kuroi Senko, Konoha Yellow Flash, to use his ultimate technique, the Horishin no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God technique. Naruto's smile faded a bit when he saw the look on Inari's face. Inari, you're going to be lonely aren't you? You can cry you know. I'm not going to cry but you can Naruto, Inari responded holding back tears. Is that so? Naruto's face was a dam that was about to break, see you later, he turned around quickly, he wouldn't be the one to break. Even though he did his best, a few stray tears streamed down his face. Sakura couldn't help but roll her eyes, stubborn Baka. The people of Wave Country watched as the five shinobi walked back towards Konoha. The boy changed Inari's heart and Inari changed the heart of the villagers. He created a bridge of courage, which led to hope, Tazuna said. You know, speaking of bridges, we still have to name this one, said one of the villagers. I forgot, but I've got the perfect name for the bridge, Tazuna said. Oh, what is it? asked another villager. Tazuna focused his gaze on the retreating form of Naruto, how about the, the great Naruto bridge? Tsunami giggled, that's a good name for it. All right. As soon as we get home I'm gonna have Aruka-sensei treat me to some ramen to celebrate the successful completion of our mission. 
Then I'm gonna make Konohamaru listen to my tale of bravery. Then all. Hey Sasuke-kun. Interrupted Sakura. Do you want to go on a date as soon as we get back to the village? No, was his simple one-worded answer, to which Naruto and Haku couldn't help but roll their eyes. Then Naruto decided to speak up. Hey, I'll go, he offered cheerfully. Shut up and be quiet Naruto Baka. Snapped Sakura before hitting Naruto on the head. Haku slapped his own forehead at Naruto's hopeless crusade to get Sakura to notice him, much less win her heart. The trip to Konoha was a few days longer than the trip to Wave. Without the worry of getting Tazuna to safety and Sasuke and Naruto's training it was understandable. Sasuke was working on activating his Sharingan at will and sustaining it. During the rigorous training he managed to get a second Tomo in his left eye. Naruto's training consisted of keeping the Jagan open and using it to help with his chakra control. During these sessions, Sakura would train with Haku, who trained her in some basic healing methods and techniques as well as some taijutsu to supplement what she had learned from the Konoha Ninja Academy. Naruto, what's with the eye of yours? Asked Sakura as she took a break from her training. Naruto was standing in front of a large bonfire, trying to use the Jagan to control the fire, with minimal success. His hair was standing straight up and his Jagan was glowing a bright teal color and he currently was only wearing his orange jumpsuit pants. He didn't want any more shirts to meet the same fate as a couple others had during their travels. She could see the seal on Naruto's stomach dissipate as his chakra went back down to normal levels. When asked about it, Naruto evaded answering saying that as was just some sort of containment seal meant to help him control chakra. While Sasuke, Haku and Sakura would tell he was telling the truth, Naruto was a horrible liar, they could also tell he was leaving something out, as his smile would falter for a quick moment before he became loud and overly cheery. After thinking on it for some time, she realized that Naruto always acted like that and she wondered just how much of the real Naruto anyone ever saw. It's a keke jenke, called the Jagan, he answered her, it's a dojutsu like Sasuke Tami's Sharingan or the Hyuga clan by Akugan. He turned to her looking at her speculatively. After finding out he had a bloodline limit, he had practically grilled Kakashi and Haku on everything they knew about other keke jenke that could be found in Konoha or anywhere else. Haku told him about his Hyaten, ice release, abilities, and Kakashi mentioned one that had once been found in Konoha, and used by the Shodem Hokage, called Mokaton, wood release. He also compared the Jagan to both the Byakugan and the Sharingan. Kakashi then told Naruto rumors of an ability to manipulate bones called Shikatsumyaku, dead bone pulse, which was thought to have been eradicated by Kiri. Of course the Hyaten Keke Jenke was also thought to have been whipped out, so there could be other unknown survivors of the bloodline limit extermination that took place all those years ago, though it was highly unlikely. Not much was really known about it since the massacre had happened a decade prior and Kiri had all records of their native Keke Jenkes destroyed. Surely it can't be as G. Kakashi interrupted what Sakura had been about to say by covering her mouth. Trust me Sakura, whatever you do, do not under any circumstances insult that eye, even unintentionally, he told her. The look in his exposed eye was enough to placate her anger, albeit temporarily. Even Sasuke and Haku looked curious about his reaction. The origins of the Jagan are a mystery. Unlike the Byakugan or the Sharingan, it is not a Keke Jenke native to Konoha. In fact, it's so rare that there is only one other known sighting of the Jagan in all of the elemental countries. Other than the fact that the majority of the Jagan's abilities are unknown, even to those with the bloodline, what really sets it apart from other dojutsu is the fact that it has a consciousness separate from the wilder. Everyone I've seen insult the eye has died, no matter how much more powerful they were than the wilder. You said there was only one other person to possess the Jagan. And considering what you just said, it sounded like you knew that person, who were they? Asked Sakura, I mean, we never learned of the Jagan in the academy. And, she glanced quickly at Naruto and took a deep breath before continuing, as far as anyone knows. Dot dot, Naruto, doesn't have any family. What happened to them? She was very hesitant to ask. After all, it was very hard to miss the glares that the townspeople sent at their blonde teammate. One would often think it was for all of the pranks the blonde ninja had done in the past. However, with the emergence of a Keke Jenke, one had to wonder. If his family had somehow dishonored Konoha. While she was curious, 
she didn't want to pry too far into other people's business. Kakashi glanced quickly at Naruto, whose facial expression was wearing a very saddening frown. After we get back, Kakashi-sensei and I have to talk to Oji-san first. Afterwards, we'll tell you what we can. He then turned and walked into the forest away from the campsite. Naruto. Sakura whispered. Don't worry Sakura, he just needs some time to himself. Kakashi reassured her. Naruto had been oddly quiet for the rest of the trip so much that even Sakura was showing concern for her normally annoying blonde teammate over fawning over her beloved, Sasuke-kun, much to the relief of everyone, especially Sasuke. Though he tried not to show it, even he was concerned about his teammate. As they approached the gates, Naruto closed the jagan and tied his hite ite back around his forehead. When questioned, he told them he hadn't wanted to reveal it to anyone yet before they had spoken with the Hokage. Hokage-sama Team 7 reporting another mission successfully completed, said Kakashi. It's good to hear, although I must admit I got worried when our patrols picked up the Demon Brothers not too long ago, Sandame said. So tell me Kakashi, who is this? Indicating Haku was the one he was asking about. This is Haku, he was Momochi Zabaza's apprentice, and wishes to become a Konoha Shinobi, said Kakashi. He has considerable skills with various flora and fauna in uses of medicine and with some training could make a good medic nin as he has excellent chakra control from what I've seen. He also has a keke jenke that allows him to use Hayaten jutsus like the shodem could use mokaton jutsu. Kakashi then took a steadying breath, there is also one other thing to report. He said with great hesitancy. Oh, and what would that be? Asked Sandame with an interested look. Worry evident as he caught the uncomfortable looks on Kakashi and Naruto's faces. It's awakened, hasn't it? Kakashi raised an eyebrow, but Naruto's expression went from uncomfortable, to shocked, to anger. You knew, didn't you? He shouted angrily. You knew all this time he was my father and you didn't tell me, even after. Naruto closed his eyes tightly, and pulled the Hitai ITE off of his head. Although his hair was now standing straight up the eye had not opened. You weren't supposed to know until absolutely necessary. Either until after you became of age, made chunin, or in case your keke jenke awakened, Sandame said apologetically, it was one of his final requests. Just like I was to be seen as a hero? Naruto asked bitterly, like anyone really followed that request. Naruto. Sakura scolded him, only to have Naruto turn around and glare at her, the jagan was glowing fiercely. The intensity of his glare was such that she flinched back instinctively. He had never even so much has gotten annoyed with her nor had he ever said anything bad about her. This look was completely out of character for him to direct at her and she had to admit that look was startling enough without making her constantly challenge everything she knew about Naruto. Tell me Sakura-chan. How would you like it if the man you looked up to more than anyone else, the one you respected above all others, was responsible for nearly every horrible thing that has ever happened to you? Asked Naruto angrily, that even after all of that, you come to find out he was your own father. He did not shout any of this, nor did he even sound angry. It was clear he was upset and there was a hint of fear and desperation in his voice, though one had to truly listen to catch it. Naruto, I assure you, Arashi only wanted the best for you. It pained him greatly to know that you would grow up alone, said Sandame. But, you must understand, he made a great deal of enemies. You would have been an even greater had it been known that you were his son. Whose son? Asked Sakura. Naruto's father, was also my sensei. Kazama Arashi, the Yandaimi Hokage. Kakashi informed them. This brought shocked looks to Sasuke, Sakura and Haku. But, I don't, I don't understand, Sakura said confusedly. Naruto looked at them in sadness. He closed the jagan and tied the Hitai ITE back onto his head. Go ahead and tell them everything. It's too much for me to deal with at the moment. Uruka sensei or Konohamaru should know where to find me. With that Naruto walked out the door in a sort of daze, a devastated look marred his face. Naruto was walking along aimlessly through the streets of Konoha when a square rock with eye holes began to follow him. He sighed, he really didn't feel up to this at the moment but Konohamaru and his friends always proved to be a great distraction. He didn't know if it was Konohamaru's blatant hero worship of himself, or the way the other two, Udon and Moegi, seemed to look up at him with admiration and respect, 
but even in his darkest moods they could usually cheer him up fairly quickly. Perhaps it was because, after Aruka, they were the first to accept him to see past the mask he put up, and the pranks and saw him for who he was instead of who, or what, he appeared to be. Just this once, he'd thought, for perhaps the one thousandth time, I'll humor them a bit. You know Konohamaru. Naruto sighed, rocks aren't perfectly square, and they don't have eye holes. Just what I'd expect from my eternal rival, shouted the rock, before exploding into multicolored smoke. When the smoke cleared Naruto could see three young children on their hands and knees in a coughing fit. Too much gunpowder, said the one in the middle who was wearing a yellow shirt, khaki pants, blue scarf and a set of green goggles. When they noticed Naruto was watching them they all shot up to their feet and struck poses. The first up was a girl with orange hair and rosy cheeks. She wore a pink shirt with a maroon vest and cape over it and khaki shorts. She, like Konohamaru, wore green goggles on her head. Sexiness of an adult, Kunoichi, Moegi. The other boy, who wore a dark blue jacket and khaki shorts and giant glasses on his face, as well as yet another set of green goggles. I love assembling models, Udon. The leader, not to be outdone, was the most enthusiastic of the bunch. The village's number one genius ninja, Konohamaru. In unison they all said, the three of us together make, the Konohamaru core. Naruto couldn't help but smirk at their actions, what's with the goggles? We've decided to copy the old you, said Konohamaru proudly. Naruto smiled at the young boy. Don't ever change Konohamaru. He then took the rooftops heading towards his spot. Konohamaru-kun, is Naruto ni chan all right? asked Moegi. The normally cheerful and energetic leader frowned a moment before giving her a small smile, he will be, nothing keeps the boss down for long. The genin and Haku looked uncomfortable and upset at what the Hokage and Kakashi told them. His eyes, Haku whispered, at everyone's questioning look, I've only saw those eyes on one other person, and that was when Zabuza and I left Kiri. They held the same expression mine did before I was found by Zabuza. They're similar to both Sasuke-san and Kakashi-san's, but also far different. Judging from Kakashi's exposed eye, Sakura could tell he was frowning. Sasuke on the other hand remained emotionless and silent. He neither confirmed or denied anything Haku had said. Sakura was dismayed, and for the first time she took a look at those around her and realized just how lucky she had been. Sasuke-kun's entire family had been killed, Haku's father killed his mother and tried to kill him and it seemed Kakashi-sensei was hiding some sort of dark past as well. He's good at hiding it, but it's painfully visible to those who have suffered as much as he has or to those who now to look, said Kakashi, I'll be the first to admit that I too fell into the same trap as the villagers. While I did not hold the same contempt for the fox the village has, I did not step in to help him either. Worry not Kakashi, he bears no grudge against you, said Sandame, still, I think it's time to find Naruto and show him that you're still his friends. While you may not be the closest of groups, he has found a measure of acceptance with each of you and he fears losing that more than anything. Sakura, Haku, and Sasuke each went after Naruto. They took Naruto's earlier advice and sought out Konohamaru, as Aruka was still teaching classes. Needless to say, they got more than they bargained for. Hello Konohamaru-san, have you seen Naruto around lately? Asked Sakura. She smiled sweetly at the little boy. He only growled in response why he yelled haven't you done enough already he wouldn't even stop to play ninja with us like he promised sasuke snorted a ninja playing ninja that was obviously the wrong response as moegi and udon immediately latched on to the sandame's grandson let me go i'm gonna kick his ass yelled konohamaru let me go i can't let him get away with making fun of the boss sasuke raised an eyebrow at the small boy's behavior while Sakura looked shocked at the sheer amount of protectiveness and devotion he had for Naruto, while Haku merely smiled at the boy. Haku squatted down to Konohamaru's level and smiled. I assure you Konohamaru-san, we do not wish Naruto-sama any ill will. He's just down from some things he found out today and we wish to cheer him up. Do you know where we can find him? Konohamaru calmed down visibly, enough that Udon and Moegi let go of their leader. He still glared at Sasuke suspiciously. Turning back to Haku, I believe you, but, if you hurt Ni Chan I will kick your ass. His glare was mostly directed at Sasuke when he said this. 
Sakura finally had enough of it. Quit glaring at Sasuke-kun like that and just tell us where we can find Naruto, she demanded. How dare he glare at Sasuke-kun like that, yelled inner Sakura. After a fierce glare at Sakura, Konohamaru gave in, fine I'll tell you. When boss wants to be alone, away from everyone, he goes to the top of the Hokage mountain. He said it helps him think when he's away from everyone and the Yandaimi's head has the best view of the village. Thank you Konohamaru-san, smiled Haku. If you continue to protect your precious people, you will grow strong. Remember that, said Haku as the trio left the Konohamaru core in search of Naruto. Konohamaru smiled at Haku, you're nice. You'd be much better for the boss than the big four-headed girl he likes so much. You're much prettier too, he blushed slightly when he said this. Haku sighed and restrained Sakura as she charged at Konohamaru. Moegi and Udon cringed in fear behind him at the murderous eyes of the pink-haired Kunoichi. I'm a boy, he said as he walked off, more than a little aggravated that people kept assuming he was a girl. They left behind three gaping children. It wasn't long afterwards that the two genin and the former nuke Nin found a very dejected Naruto sitting where Konohamaru said he'd be sitting on top of the Yandaimi's head looking out over the village. I'm surprised you're here, said Naruto. Even Sasuke was surprised that Naruto was able to sense their presence. Don't look so surprised, it's just a little side affect of the jagan. It seems as if the world is much clearer than it used to be. He gave a small smile before going silent once more. Much to everyone's surprise, it was Sasuke who spoke first. Even with your new Keke Jenke and your furry little problem, you're still a Dobi. Is that so? said Naruto in a low voice. Then let's go to the training grounds so I can kick your ass Sasuke Teme. When he looked back at his teammates and Haku he gave them a foxy half grin. Get real loser. I wouldn't even have to active my Sharingan to take on the likes of you, said Sasuke arrogantly. I'll kick your ass so hard not even your precious fangirls will want to be near you, shouted Naruto. Naruto Baka, if you even think about harming my precious Sasuke-kun I'll make sure you won't be able to eat ramen for a week, threatened Sakura. That's right. And then we'll beat that Eno pig to a pulp and Sasuke-kun will be all mine, Shanaru, inner Sakura exclaimed while pumping her fist up and down over her head. Sakura-chan, whined Naruto. Haku smiled. Those three were going to be just fine. A week later, things were back to normal except Naruto didn't bother Sakura so often. Not that his teammates noticed, or at least Sasuke didn't. Sakura actually began to miss the blonde's attention as she began to realize he was always there to help her when she was down from facing yet another of Sasuke's rejections. Naruto spent most of his time either training his new Keke Genke or practicing Kenjutsu after Kakashi gave him the Yandaimi's sword, Shikan no Rujin, Fang of the Dragon King. To help with his Kenjutsu, Kakashi got Gekko Hayate, as well as made a guy's student, Ten Ten, to help with Naruto's training. Kakashi could see Sakura become more and more visibly depressed as time went on, when he investigated, he noticed what she had, although he had come to the realization much faster than she did. You don't know what you have until it's gone. He mused to himself, then he looked over to Naruto, however, he isn't gone yet, his feelings are very much the same. He's just trying to suppress them, to keep himself from being hurt. Kakashi frowned thinking back to when Naruto changed his behavior towards Sakura. He then shook his head sadly, of course. If he didn't stand a chance before, he thinks there's no hope now that she knows. Naruto. Haku had gone through an evaluation of his skills. Sandame placed him as a chunin with eligibility for the Jonin exams in two years' time. He was placed in the hospital to learn more from the medical staff there. Haku's skills had shown enough promise that he was placed in training under a very promising genin named Yukushi Kabuto. As stated before, things were pretty much back to normal. Almost. Sasuke-kun. Would you like to train with me, you know? Boost our team work skills? Asked Sakura, her face filled with hope. No, you're annoying. Said Sasuke, you have absolutely no talent and your skills are even worse than Naruto's before he awakened the jagan. Oh. A all right, said Sakura dejectedly. WW worse. Then. Naruto. She let her head fall down as she walked away depressed. A few blocks away, Naruto was sitting in the lotus position on the roof of a building. 
His eyes were closed and his jagan had started to glow with great intensity while he clenched his hands into tight fists. He had seen and heard the entire interaction between Sasuke and Sakura. Baka, Sasuke Teme. He muttered to himself. Yo, Naruto. What's going on? Asked Kakashi. Naruto sighed, nothing Kakashi sensei. Naruto had gone through a complete wardrobe change. He now wore an orange sleeveless shirt, black baggy pants, with boots that went halfway up his shins. He was wearing his Hitai ITE, which now had orange cloth instead of blue, around his waist. He wore a simple black headband around his forehead, which was currently in his pocket, to conceal the jagan, a black wristband on each arm, and a black trench coat with two orange stripes that stretched the entire length of both arms from the cuff to the collar. Sasuke rejects Sakura again. He asked innocently. He had been observing Naruto when he was observing the other two. Only one thing ever made him react like that. I I, I don't know what you're talking about, shouted Naruto angrily. She'll come around eventually Naruto, Kakashi consoled him. HN. Naruto grunted, this eye sees more than you think Kakashi sensei. He said sadly, I don't stand a chance. Not now. Not ever. There's still time. After all, you both are only twelve, Kakashi said trying to boost Naruto's spirits. It was unnerving having to do so, when far too often it was the other way around. You don't get it do you? Asked Naruto respectfully, I can see everything in the smallest detail when I concentrate hard enough and take the time to notice. Sasuke's constant rejections haven't gone unnoticed. He was far less fan girls than he used to. Many of them that he still has, react differently to him now. He's less of an idol to them, but not Sakura. She's so determined. Her feelings run much deeper than the others, even the Eno girl she's always competing with. While the others are chasing a dream, she's trying to bring out the real Sasuke he hides underneath all the layers of emo -ness. She loves him even more than she knows. I. I wonder if this is how Obito felt all those times. Kakashi gave Naruto a sad smile that went unnoticed due to his mask. Things will work out. They always do. Said Naruto sagely. So, what do you need? I doubt you came to talk about my lack of love life. Kakashi smiled. Yes, well, I want you and the others to meet me on the bridge tomorrow at noon. And don't worry, I'll let the others know. Go ahead and continue your training. Later that day, Naruto was walking down the streets when his jagan began to glow for a moment behind the headband. Konohamaru. You really need to come up with something new. That's when the square, rock, with eye holes that had been trailing the blonde Jinchuriki yelled out, I couldn't expect anything less from my eternal rival. After yet another explosion of multicolored smoke, three young kids appeared on the ground coughing on their hands and knees. Too much gunpowder, coughed out Udon. Naruto mentally sighed at their appearance. His three, subordinates, were still sporting their green goggles, but now they were also sporting trench coats similar to his own. Konohamaru was wearing a black trench coat with a light blue stripe running down the arms. Moegi's was black with two pink stripes and Udon's was black with three tan stripes. The three saw Naruto watching them and immediately struck poses. The most beautiful and graceful kunoichi in history, Moegi. I enjoy doing long division, Udon. Genius ninja and future number one Hokage ever, Konohamaru. And together, they all shouted in unison, we form the Konohamaru core. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Taking on more of my style, eh? Of course, I can't allow my eternal rival to be more stylish than we are, shouted Konohamaru, so. Boss, you have time right? He asked hopefully. I dunno. I've been awfully busy lately, Naruto said teasingly, scratching the back of his head. The members of the Konohamaru core turned to look at each other and each nodded. Do it Moegi, shouted Konohamaru. Much to Naruto's surprise, Moegi went through a series of hand seals, but he couldn't place the technique as one he'd ever remembered seeing. Puppy dog eyes no jutsu, she shouted. Come on boss. Play ninja with us, Konohamaru begged. Please, Moegi and Udon added. Sakura watched the entire scene with a small smile on her face. It was the small moments like these when she missed her blonde team mate the most, as he always had that special ability to lift other spirits no matter what. I guess I have some time to spare, he said as if he was busy. A ninja playing ninja, Sakura teased her teammate. Sakura-chan, whispered Naruto, 
He had been so focused on the Konohamaru core antics, he hadn't felt her distinctive presence approach. He was so caught of guard that even Konohamaru caught the expression on Naruto's face when he saw Sakura before it passed. Sakura, on the other hand, remained oblivious to the depth of Naruto's feelings. Konohamaru decided it was time to step in and help the boss for once. Hey boss, is she, is she your, you know, he asked holding up his pinky. After glancing quickly at Sakura to gauge her reaction, Naruto decided on taking the safe route, after all he wouldn't interfere with her love if he could help it any longer. No, Sakura is just my teammate, nothing more, Naruto said seriously. The words stung. More than they should have, Sakura admitted to herself. Why should you care what he thinks of you? Maybe he finally got the hint and realized that our heart only belongs to Sasuke-kun, Shanaru, shouted inner Sakura. Sakura didn't answer or even acknowledge her second personality. Naruto missed the brief look of hurt that graced Sakura's face. Konohamaru decided a little bit of reverse psychology was in order to try and get the pink-haired Kunoichi to finally see the boss for what he truly was. Just as I expected from my eternal rival, I knew you wouldn't go out with someone like her. You're much too good for her. Naruto's eyes widened in horror and Sakura's face drooped in sadness as each replayed Sasuke's words to her earlier. Naruto was torn between berating Konohamaru and comforting the now distraught Sakura, however Konohamaru wasn't finished. I mean, who'd want to go out with some flat-chested, ugly girl with a gigantic forehead? Sakura's expression went from dejected to absolutely furious as Naruto's became even more afraid. Kuso. Run, Konohamaru. The Konohamaru core ran at the sight of an enraged Sakura with Naruto close behind. As they turned the corner, Konohamaru ran into a big guy in a black jumpsuit with cat ears. He had something strapped to his back that was wrapped in bandages. Hey that hurt you little gaki, shouted the boy as he snatched up Konohamaru be the collar. Put him down, threatened Naruto coldly, he pulled back his jacket revealing his sword. Don't start any trouble, he'll get angry said a blonde-haired girl who wore a Suna Hite ITE around her neck and a giant fan strapped to her back. We're here for the exams only not to pick fights. He's not here right now, and I just want to have a little fun. Besides this little twerp bumped into me. I need to teach him to watch where he's going, said the tall stocky boy. Sakura looked at the girl questioningly, exams? Why are you here? I, I mean, judging by your Hite ITE, you're from Suna but even allies of Konoha need a passport signed by the Hokage. You mean these? Said the girl arrogantly showing her passport, we're here for the Chunin exams. Seeing that you don't know about them means you must be a rookie. Just pathetic little weaklings. I won't repeat myself again. Put. Him. Down. Naruto's eyes became slitted. What are you gonna do? You're almost as small as this gaki, taunted the Suna Nin. Before Naruto could move, a rock struck the boy's arm, forcing him to release Konohamaru. Kuso, keep your nose out of where it belongs. The boy shouted to the branch of the tree, on which sat Konoha's current rookie of the year, Uchiha Sasuke. He crushed the rock he was holding in his hand. When it concerns a fellow citizen of Konoha, it concerns all of us, Sasuke said, especially when you decide to pick on the Hokage's defenseless grandson. Do you want trouble, eh? Asked the boy angrily. Let's see how you handle this, he said as he pulled the object off his back. You're not going to use that are you? Asked the blonde-haired girl with a worried tone. I wouldn't if I were you, warned Naruto. And why is that, scared? Taunted the boy. No, the guy with the gourd on his back on the branch next to Sasuke is becoming very angry at you, said Naruto. Everyone looked back up at the tree in shock, even Sasuke. I didn't even sense him and he was right next to me thought Sasuke, the shock evident on his face. The second boy's face flitted with surprise before turning to annoyance. Konkuro. Quit making a fool of yourself. Or I will kill you, he said. GG Gara. Konkuro whispered as the new kid, Gara, disappeared in a swirl of sand and appeared next to Konkuro, Naruto and the blonde girl. Only Naruto and the girl heard him. You're an embarrassment to our village, Gara emotionlessly scolded Konkuro. What did you think we came to Konoha to do? L listen. The S Street started it. Shut up, or I'll kill you, Gara threatened, and by the look on both Konkuro and the girl's faces he would more than likely live up to his threat. 
I got it. My mistake, apologized Konkuro with a terrified expression on his face. I'm sorry. Very, very sorry. My apologies to you guys, Gara said to the Genin and kids next to his teammates. Gara looked towards Sasuke, he was able to hit Konkuro with that stone so easily. He's good. He thought to himself, but. This one. He had no problem sensing my presence. He's just as good. And yet. Familiar. He thought as he turned his gaze to Naruto. So. Familiar. Thought Naruto as he watched the red haired boy. We're leaving. Gara ordered the other two. We did not come here to play around. I know, acknowledged Konkuro. Sasuke jumped down to join his teammates. What is your name? He demanded of Gara. Konkuro flinched, but the girl had a faint blush. Why you wish to know my name? She asked. No, Sasuke said coldly. I want to know his. He said pointing at Gara. The one with the gourd. The girl tried not to let her disappointment show. Sabaku no Gara, he answered. I am also interested in you too. What are your names? He said nodding towards Sasuke and Naruto. Uchiha Sasuke. Uzumaki Naruto, said Naruto. Only Gara saw the brief glow of the jagan underneath Naruto's headband. It was hard wasn't it? He asked Gara. Gara stiffened at the question. The others only looked in confusion at both Naruto and Gara. The loneliness was hell, wasn't it? Always asking yourself what your purpose was. You know nothing of what you speak, Gara replied coldly. Konkuro and the girl trembled in fear. I understand far better than you think. We're the same, you and I. Naruto closed his eyes and when he opened them again, they were blood red and slitted. Konkuro and the girl stepped back from the two. Gara's eyes widened in surprise for a quick moment before he merely grunted in response and walked away his companions trailing behind him. What was that about boss? Asked Konohamaru, who was proud of his boss showing up the Uchiha prodigy. You were so cool. Unlike other times, Naruto didn't say anything for a long while, his eyes never leaving the retreating backs of the Sunanin, though they had since returned to their normal sapphire color. He then turned to Sasuke and Sakura with a frown on his face, that boy. He's, like me, we have to let Kakashi Sensei know about this when we see him tomorrow. Sakura and Sasuke nodded in understanding. Konohamaru just looked at Naruto with a confused expression on his face, his friends were equally puzzled. What do you mean by that, boss? Naruto simply squatted down to face Konohamaru, I'll tell you, but now is not the time, alright. When I think you're ready, I'll tell you, all three of you. He said pointing to Moegi and Udon as well. Konohamaru was about to protest but Naruto quickly cut him off, I promise, Konohamaru. I vow on my dream to be Hokage and our friendship, I will tell you eventually, just. Not right now. Konohamaru's smile threatened to cover his entire face. Not only had Naruto acknowledged him as Konohamaru instead of honorable grandson, but he truly considered Konohamaru to be a true friend, and perhaps a true rival as well. Sure thing, Naruto ni san. Naruto couldn't keep the fox like smile from showing on his face. The members of Team 7 had shown up one by one, two and a half hours after the arranged meeting time. After all, when your sensei is chronically late, you can't expect him to change his ways even for something as important as the announcement of the Chunin selection exams. Both Naruto and Sasuke were ready for the exams, and were eagerly anticipating them. Sakura, on the other hand, was not. She had doubts of her own abilities. She had no illusions that she was the weakest link on their team. Her chakra control was the best, but she had far less chakra and stamina than Sasuke, whose own reserves paled in comparison to Naruto's. Of course Naruto's chakra pool was so huge, that even with the jagan, controlling his massive power was still rather difficult, putting Sasuke and Naruto on an almost equal level if she was completely honest with herself. Of course Sasuke knew and could perform more jutsus, but Naruto's were more unique and definitely nothing to laugh at, as she learned in Wave Country. Sasuke's superior skills were offset by Naruto's overwhelming power. Yo! Greeted Kakashi. You're late, yelled Sakura. Well, you see. I got lost on the road of life, he said. Liar, she shouted. You know Sakura-chan, it's not like we've been waiting long. We just got here not too long ago ourselves. Smirked Naruto. Sakura punched him on the back of the head. Baka, she whispered to Naruto harshly. Anyways, 
I have great news for you all, he said lazily. You're entering us into the Chunin exams that takes place in two days? asked Sasuke, though it was almost more of a statement. Well. Yes. How did you guess? We ran into a bit of trouble yesterday with the Suna team. They have a someone like me on their team. His name is Gara. Naruto informed Kakashi. Kakashi frowned. I had heard rumors, but I'd have never have suspected the Kaze Cage's own son to be one. This may complicate things later. Gara is the Kaze Cage's son? asked Sakura. Yes, in fact, his teammates are his older brother and sister, Kakashi informed them, it would be best to avoid him as much as possible during the exams, though that will be impossible once the third part of the exam starts. Why is that Kakashi sensei? asked Sakura. Sorry, but I'm afraid I can't tell you that, said Kakashi. Can't, or won't? asked Naruto. Either way, would it matter? Sasuke asked Naruto, we're not going to find out until we get that far. Naruto nodded his head. Remember it's each individual's choice whether or not to participate. I don't want to see any of you there unless you're absolutely ready. Kakashi warned them as he handed them their registration forms. Don't worry about it Kakashi sensei, just leave everything to us, said Naruto. Naruto baka. Sakura shouted hitting him on the head. This is serious. People have died in these exams. But Sakura chan, we're all a lot stronger now. Especially you, you're at least twice as powerful as you were when we first left for Wave Country. We've all grown a lot since then, but especially you. Naruto said sincerely. Sakura blushed with the bit of praise only she quickly became dismayed because it was Naruto, not Sasuke-kun, that complimented her and tried to raise her spirits. Kakashi smiled at the small by play. Sasuke looked a bit annoyed and somewhat relieved that his most avid fangirl was finally moving on. Thanks Naruto, she said gratefully. Well, I must be off, you have the rest of the day free, said Kakashi as he used Shunshin to teleport away in a swirl of leaves. One of these days, I am going to learn how to do that, said Naruto under his breath. Sasuke nodded in agreement. Hey, Sasuke-kun, would you like to do something tonight? asked Sakura. No, he coldly answered slightly annoyed at her. Sakura frowned for a bit before deciding to turn to Naruto. Hey Naruto, he was already gone. Even Naruto is leaving me behind now. She looked down at the ground and sulked as she left the training ground. Naruto watched her go with sad eyes. You know, it looked like she was finally going to ask you out Naruto, said Kakashi from behind the genin. You've been waiting for that opportunity for so long, are you just going to let her walk away? I do have some pride Kakashi sensei, Naruto sighed, I am a lot of things, loud, annoying, an idiot, but I will not be Sasuke's replacement. Fair enough, though I think you might be underestimating her though, said Kakashi. Naruto simply shrugged his shoulders in reply before setting out to find something to do for the rest of the afternoon. It wasn't long until Naruto found the Konohamaru core, or rather, they found him. Naruto Nichan, are you going to play ninja with us today? asked Udon. Yeah, you didn't play ninja with us the last time you said you would. accused Konohamaru. Well, I would have if you hadn't gone and pissed off Sakura chan like that, Naruto defended himself. Then you had to go and pick a fight with that Suna bully. I was only trying to get her to go out with you, exclaimed Konohamaru, now on the defensive. I appreciate it, I really do, but Sakura chan just doesn't feel that way about me, said Naruto. It wasn't lost on Moegi that he hadn't mentioned his own feelings for his teammate and she decided to help out her own crush and call Naruto out on it. What about you, Ni chan? Don't you like her? Naruto sighed. These kids would be the death of him one day, he was sure of it. Listen guys, I know what you're trying to do, but this is just something I have to deal with on my own. You still didn't answer the question boss, pointed out Konohamaru. And I don't plan on it either, argued Naruto. The Konohamaru core all nodded in unison as they looked at each other. Do it Moegi. Puppy dog eyes no jutsu, she shouted and gave Naruto that menacing stare that he knew he'd give in to. Before he could answer though, Moegi was spirited away by an enemy shinobi. Ni chan, shouted Moegi. Konohamaru kun, boss, you gotta save her, shouted Konohamaru. Right, just leave everything to me, said Naruto confidently as he took off after the other shinobi. After a short chase, Naruto confronted the enemy shinobi who had Moegi tied to a tree. 
drop out of the chunin exams or i'll kill the girl said the ninja you're pathetic i could beat you without even laying a finger on you said naruto confidently and how do you think you're going to accomplish that asked the ninja look down said naruto as he puffed out of existence wah anything else he was about to say was interrupted when naruto burst from the ground gukaden inochi enku no kobushi shouted naruto as he punched the ninja in the face i've improved more than you gave me credit for having i aruka sensei the konohamaru corps looked at the enemy nin in shock the nin dropped the henge congratulations naruto you passed though how did you know it was me easy i could tell by the feel of your chakra he answered you can sense chakra signatures asked aruka amazed that's incredible for one your age most jonin can't do that naruto smirked since when was i ever a regular shinobi you'll make a fine hokage one day naruto said aruka sincerely the best one ever until konohamaru here takes over for me he said as he smirked ruffling konohamaru's hair it took a moment for konohamaru to register what naruto had said but then gave him a big grin before hugging him do you mean that boss asked konohamaru you betcha konohamaru it's the job of each hokage to surpass the one before him but don't think because you're my favorite rival that i'll make it easy for you you're going to have to work extra hard to surpass me naruto told the young boy don't worry boss just leave everything to me shouted konohamaru when i become hokage i'm going to surpass all the ones that came before me believe it he shouted going into the nice guy pose a n the opportunity was just w a a a a a a y too good to pass up naruto and aruka sweat dropped he's even stealing my catch phrases naruto thought with a deadpan look on his face why don't we go out for some ramen in a bit i have to file a report on your progress naruto but i'll meet you all at ichiraku's in about 10 minutes all right said aruka disappearing in a swirl of leaves kuso i really have to learn how to do that thought naruto as he and the konohamaru corps headed off to his favorite restaurant not too far away from where naruto had saved moegi how did they do asked kakashi spectacularly i'm afraid said aruka with a small sigh they've all progressed much farther than i thought they would in such a short time what did you think of naruto's performance asked kakashi lazily his his performance surprised me the most said aruka with a slight smile he's really come far how did he learn to sense chakra signatures in such a short time since naruto trusts you so much i suppose it wouldn't hurt to tell you though i'm sure naruto would have preferred to tell you himself said kakashi he's awakened a keke jenke the only people who know are sasuke sakura haku myself and the sandame aruka frowned but that means he must have a family after all he then started to shake in rage all the time spent alone his family all died during the kayubi attack interrupted kakashi we just know for certain who they were who asked aruka letting go of his anger arashi sensei said kakashi why yandaimi sama aruka gasped kakashi nodded b but that means kakashi nodded a second time aruka regained control how'd he take it not well at first and that's to be expected but he understood said kakashi he actually took it better than i thought he would so naruto has the jagan said aruka wistfully he then looked sad for a moment you were right kakashi san you're just looking out for them so there is no need to apologize kakashi assured him just keep in mind that they do have to grow up at some time now i believe you have to meet some hokage candidates and their friends that are waiting for you to treat them to ramen naruto was the first to arrive on the day the exams began he only had to wait 10 minutes before sasuke slightly trailed by sakura came into view you ready dobi asked sasuke arrogantly you bet teme said naruto excitedly just don't cry when you end up in the hospital after the beating i'm going to give you in the exams as if i work harder getting out of bed in the morning than i would fighting you he said confidently a smirk appeared on his face that's because you're too afraid to fight me anymore you'd rather be lazy and stay in bed or practicing your stealth skills by escaping your fangirls teased naruto you're just jealous because you don't have any replied sasuke take that back yelled naruto as team seven entered the building 
They failed to notice the blushing pale-eyed member of Team 8 who had been watching them, or rather Naruto, from behind a corner of the building. She had frowned at Sasuke's remark because, while she didn't consider herself a fangirl, as that would be improper, she did admire Naruto a great deal. Hey Hanada! shouted her teammate, what are you doing? And nothing, Kiba-kun, she said hesitantly as her two teammates approached. Well, I guess we should go, huh? asked Kiba, then he got an excited look on his face, we are so going to kick so much ass. Provided you don't do anything too rash Kiba, said Shino. Relax, how hard can it be? he asked. More than anything we might be able to handle, do keep in mind we are only rookie genins. Shino reminded him, it is logical to assume that we have the greatest chance of failing this exam, and your tendency to rush into things will only serve to hold us back. So I'm holding us back huh? asked Kiba dangerously. P please D don't fight. Hanada pleaded quietly, I'm ss sure Shino kun didn't m mean it like th that. Hanada's right, for the time being, we have much more important things to worry about. Shino agreed, while Kiba merely grunted in acceptance. Team 7 had only gone up one floor when they were stopped by a group of people who were standing in front of the door. Sasuke was walking in between Sakura and Naruto, slightly ahead of them. In the middle of the group they watched two people keeping people from entering the room. Sasuke looked up at the sign, it read 301. He looked back at Naruto who simply nodded at him. Sasuke stepped in when the two ninja knocked down a kid wearing a green leotard and sported a bowl haircut and bushy eyebrows. You plan on taking the Chunin exams like that? What makes you think you're good enough? Asked a kid with spiky hair. You guys should just quit now, said a second kid right next to him. He wore his hite ite like a bandana. You're all just little kids, the first one taunted. Please let us through, pleaded a girl with her hair in a double bun hairstyle. She was quickly knocked down by the two boys. Naruto recognized her instantly, as she was one of the people he trained in Kenjutsu with, and narrowed his eyes. She's much stronger than that, and her teammates are supposed to be strong too. What's going on? Listen, we're being nice, the Chunin exams aren't easy, said the first one. Of all those taking the exam, lectured the second, many will quit being shinobi, while others are unable to recover at all. We've seen it many times before. A chunin is the level of military platoon captains. The failure of a mission and the death of his men. That is all the responsibility of the captain, explained the first. We're just thinning out the ranks of those that will fail anyway. What's wrong with that? asked the second. I agree, said Sasuke stepping in, Naruto and Sakura trailing behind him. But, you'll let us pass through. Also, get rid of the genjutsu, we're going to the third floor. There was whispering throughout the room at this proclamation. Naruto was strangely relieved that Ten Ten's team was not among those surprised that there had been a genjutsu in place. So you noticed, eh? asked the second kid, not surprised in the slightest. Sakura, you must have noticed it first, right? Sasuke had noticed the pink-haired Kunoichi was distracted as of late and knew that she'd be a liability if her lack of focus continued. It's not that he didn't like her, because he did, he just didn't like the way she tended to glomp on him and dote on him constantly as if he were a small child. Your analytical skills and genjutsu identification abilities are the most advanced on our team. Thank you, Sasuke-kun, she said gratefully. Of course I already noticed. This is only the second floor, even Naruto noticed it. I'm not that bad at genjutsu, Naruto declared. In truth, even with the jagan, he was still not very good at genjutsu but his skills, in recent weeks, had skyrocketed and he knew it wouldn't be too long before he was at Sasuke's level at identifying and seeing through them without the Sharingan. He could dispel some weaker ones, but his chakra control was far too lacking to even preform the simplest of Genjutsu. The only one he could really do consistently was the Henge no Jutsu, transformation technique, and that was only because of the constant training and use of his patented Kenjutsu, the Oirok no Jutsu, sexy technique. Not bad replied the first, but all you really did was see through it. As he said this he began to move to attack Sasuke. Noticing his movements, both Sasuke and Naruto tensed. Before anyone knew what happened the green-clad boy had come in between Sasuke and the spiky-haired kid. Fast, thought a wide-eyed Sakura. It's like he's completely changed from the person who was getting knocked down just moments ago. 
As Sasuke and his impromptu opponent relaxed, Sasuke couldn't help but admire the green-clad Genin's skill. Catching that kick, that's some amazing chakra in his arms. Naruto was even more surprised than either of his teammates, because in the brief moment he used the jagan, he had caught everything in detail. He, he didn't even use chakra. Even Sasuke can't move like that. In fact, he hardly felt any chakra coming from the boy, even less than a weak academy student. There was just barely enough for the kid to be alive. What happened to the plan? Asked a pale-eyed boy next to Ten Ten, whom Naruto surmised to be her other teammate. You're the one who said we shouldn't attract attention to ourselves. Well. The green-clad genin began to explain, as he looked over at Sakura. Sakura got a feeling of dread at the pit of her stomach. Oh no. So, they were hiding their abilities. I know how strong Ten Ten can be, and this guy doesn't appear to be too weak either. I can't help but wonder how strong that other guy is. Naruto thought to himself. Meanwhile, the green-clad kid walked up to Sakura. My name is Rock Lee. So, yours is Sakura. Said Lee as if stealing up his courage, he then started to blush and gave he her a thumbs up. Will you be my girlfriend? He asked as he smiled at her and gave her a wink. I shall protect you always, until I die. And no. Way. Said Sakura, more than a little freaked out. Rock Lee just put his head down in shame. Naruto gave him a sympathetic smile, after all he knew how it felt to be rejected. Hey, you. Said the pale-eyed boy directing his eerie gaze at Sasuke. What is your name? Sizing up the competition I see. Thought Naruto, looking at the boy intently. When you want to learn someone's name, you should give your own first, said Sasuke in an arrogant tone. You're a rookie right? Asked the pale-eyed boy. How old are you? I don't have to answer to you, replied Sasuke as the other boy narrowed his eyes. What? The pale-eyed boy asked coldly, as Ten Ten giggled at their little standoff. Sasuke arrogantly turned his back on the boy. Hey Naruto, Sasuke-kun, let's go, said Sakura excitedly. Naruto turned to Ten Ten, after this is all over, do you want to train some more Ten Ten? Asked Naruto, who received strange looks from his and Ten Ten's teammates. Hayate-sensei says I've improved, but my technique still pretty much sucks. Sure thing Naruto, she smiled at the blonde genin. While he wasn't anywhere near as good as she was, he was improving at an incredibly fast pace. She still couldn't believe how far he had come in a matter of a few weeks. She was almost certain he was training every bit as much as he could with that sword of his. Naruto, how do you know her? Asked Sakura. After Kakashi Sensei gave me my father's sword, he set me up with some extra Kenjutsu training with Hayate Sensei and Ten Ten. From what I'm told, her sensei is something of a rival of Kakashi sensei's and so he jumped at the chance of helping out with my extra training. Naruto informed them, Kakashi sensei said something about me being able to use a sword would help. D. Div. Div. Divers. Diversify. Asked Sakura trying to help out her teammate. Yeah, that, Naruto said smiling. Anyways, he said it would make us better as a team. With Sasuke's numerous ninjutsu and your skills with dealing with genjutsu, he said my being able to do kenjutsu would make us harder to defeat. As they headed down the hall, Sasuke couldn't help but think about all the skilled genin he had already met. All these skilled opponents. Things look like they're going to be interesting. It wasn't long until they heard someone behind them. You, with the dark eyes, hold on. The trio turned to see the genin in the green leotard behind them on a platform above them. Naruto raised an eyebrow, Sakura cringed, and Sasuke remained impassive. What? Would you fight me, right here, right now? Lee said with a determined look on his face. A fight? Here and now? Asked Sasuke. Yes, Lee replied as he jumped over the banister and landed about a dozen feet from them. My name is Rock Lee. When you want to learn a person's name you give your own first, right? Uchiha Sasuke. So you know? Asked Sasuke now intrigued. I want to fight you, said Lee taking a defensive stance. I want to test just how far my techniques will go against a prodigy of a genius ninja clan. Lee then turned to Sakura, who cringed in fear and was beginning to freak out. Plus, he said as he blushed, Sakura-san, love. Eww. That was Sakura's limit as she began to freak out, th those eyebrows, just. Eww. You are an angel. Lee said to her, oblivious to her obvious distaste. Just. 
No. Ew. Stay away. She shouted at the bushy eyebrowed boy. You know, you don't have to be so negative, said Lee, dismayed at her rejection. Sasuke scoffed at Lee, challenging me, knowing the Uchiha name. You are a fool, you will learn what just what that name means, bushy brows, said a now scowling Sasuke. Great, smirked Lee as he changed into his Goken, strong fist stance. Finally Gai Sensei, I shall prove myself. Don't do it Sasuke, warned Naruto. Want him for yourself, Naruto? Asked Sasuke, an arrogant look on his face. He wouldn't have challenged you if he didn't think he would win, Sasuke, names and bloodlines will only get you so far, said Naruto. Rock Lee smiled at this. Shut up, Naruto, scolded Sakura, Sasuke-kun is one of the best genins there is. Not to mention with the Sharingan he's practically unstoppable. Suit yourself, but I know what I saw, he said turning to them so Lee would not see the distinctive glow of the jagan underneath his black headband. Then I'll just have to prove you wrong now won't I, Naruto, said Sasuke. Though he had not voiced it, that had been a cheap jibe against Naruto's own bloodline limit. Sasuke was insinuating that the Jagan was somehow inferior to the Sharingan. Naruto's only thought at why the eye was not calling for Sasuke's blood, was either because it did not catch the veiled insult, which he doubted, or it was content with the fact that Sasuke was about to be beaten to a pulp because of his arrogant overconfidence. Ready asked Sasuke turning his attention back to Rock Lee. Naruto watched the fight in interest, the jagan open underneath the headband. With Lee's attention fully on Sasuke, he figured it would be safe enough to use to learn that he could. Sasuke charged Lee, who was waiting patiently. Sasuke threw a punch that was easily blocked by Lee. Sasuke planted his hand on the floor to attempt a whirlwind kick on Lee when the bushy-browed boy countered. Konoha Repu, Leaf Gale shouted Lee as he did a sweep. Sasuke pushed up with his arm flipping away from his opponent. Sakura looked amazed, while Naruto looked completely unsurprised, as Sasuke and Lee were now staring at each other. He's strong, thought Sakura as she watched the boy nearly beat Sasuke-kun in the exchange. While he did not win he definitely came out with the upper hand. I'll say this, there is no way you can defeat me, said Lee with all seriousness in his expression, because, right now, I am the strongest among the Konoha genin. Sasuke narrowed his eyes, and then grunted as he smirked. Let's see just how strong you are. Sasuke got ready to go in for another exchange. Sasuke-kun, we don't have time. We have to be at the reception desk in less than 30 minutes, said Sakura worriedly. Don't worry, he said with a serious look on his face, I'll be done in five minutes. He then charged at Lee a second time. As he went to punch the green-clad genin, he disappeared. What? Incredible. And without the use of chakra, thought Naruto with an excited look in his eyes. Konoha Daisenpu, leaf great whirlwind, shouted Lee as he kicked at Sasuke's head. Sasuke narrowly ducked before a second kick came straight at him. I can't dodge. Sasuke frantically thought. I'll have to block. What? Lee's follow-up kick not only broke through Sasuke's guard but tore through it like a rock through paper. Sasuke-kun! shouted Sakura as Sasuke was sent flying and landed straight on his back. He blocked that attack. She thought as she watched Sasuke struggle to stand. What the hell is going on? Sasuke said as he picked himself off the ground. He went right through my guard. Was that a ninjutsu or a genjutsu? Fine, it's time for me to get serious said Sasuke, both eyes blazing with his two Tomo Sharingan. The Sharingan, said Sakura amazed. All the training on the way back from Wave was paying off as Sasuke could now call up the Sharingan at will, almost on instinct. Sasuke-kun is incredible. Sasuke-kun can't lose to this guy, said Sakura excitedly. Just watch. Lee's about to prove why you can't rely on a name and bloodlines, said Naruto. Before Sasuke could charge a third time, Lee kicked him in the chin sending Sasuke flying up into the air. B but the Sharingan, stuttered Sakura. A name isn't everything Sakura, said Naruto as they watched Sasuke's airborne ascent. The Sharingan can't read it, thought Sasuke, that means, his moves. My moves are neither ninjutsu nor are they genjutsu, said Lee as he prepared the next sequence of his attack. Sasuke managed to land on his feet but Lee was already on the attack, now charging Sasuke. 
Sasuke could now only hopelessly dodge Lee's attacks, but no matter what he did, Lee was still connecting with several solid shots. Sasuke backed away after taking an extra strong elbow attack from Lee. My techniques are simple taijutsu, Sasuke-kun. Just as I thought. Naruto said quietly. What do you mean? Asked Sakura. Just watch. We're about to learn the true difference between him and us. Naruto told her as Lee disappeared only to reappear behind Sasuke. You may not believe it, because it's so simple, said Lee, who then jumped to dodge an attack from Sasuke. Kuso. Sasuke said, gritting his teeth. It's said that the Sharingan can read all types of ninjutsu, genjutsu and taijutsu, lectured Lee, because ninjutsu and genjutsu require you to summon chakra and hand seals to preform, you can easily defend against them. But, taijutsu is different. What do you mean? asked Sasuke. Even if you can read my movements with your Sharingan, your body still lacks the speed to react to my taijutsu. It doesn't matter if you can see it, if your body can't keep up, it's useless. Explained Lee, I believe there are two types of people amongst the strong. The hard-working types and the genius types. Your Uchiha blood is a genius type because of your Sharingan, while I am simply a hard-working type who has mastered only taijutsu. Sasuke's frustration came to a boil as he angrily charged Lee. Lee was still lecturing while dodging Sasuke's attacks. It could be said that my ultimate taijutsu is the worst possible matchup for your Sharingan. With that, Lee knocked Sasuke into the air again with a solid kick to the chin and then jumped after him. Cage Buyo, Shadow of the Dancing Leaf. Lee was now soaring parallel to Sasuke's back. I shall now prove it with this technique that hard work surpasses genius skills. Lee's bandages began to unravel and ensnare Sasuke. I win. Before Lee could complete his move, a pinwheel cut through the air pinning his bandages to the wall. Naruto cursed, he had been so intently watching the match or rather Sasuke getting his ass handed to him that he didn't sense anyone approaching. He immediately deactivated the jagan hoping the newcomer didn't see the teal glow through the headband. That's enough Lee, shouted a red and yellow turtle with a very angry expression on his face. Lee immediately landed while Sasuke continued towards the floor, his neck about to break his fall. Sasuke-kun, shouted Sakura as she moved to catch Sasuke. Are you all right Sasuke-kun? She asked with genuine concern. Even with the jagan, I could barely keep up with his movements. I don't think even if Sasuke and I worked together that we could beat him, thought Naruto. Meanwhile, Sasuke was glaring at Rock Lee's back. Lee, that technique is forbidden, scolded the turtle. A talking turtle, thought Naruto, his attention on Lee and the newcomer not wanting to witness Sakura fawning over Sasuke, ensuring he was alright. I. I'm sorry. I hadn't planned on. Lee tried to apologize but was cut off. Fool. Do you think you can really get off on some silly excuse? Said the turtle disapprovingly. You know well that a shinobi should not reveal his special techniques. Said the turtle. Now are you prepared for your punishment? Yes. Said a downtrodden Lee. Watching the interplay between the genin and the tortoise, Naruto came to a strange conclusion. Sakura-chan. Can turtles be senseis? Asked Naruto in a whisper. Sakura looked at him as if he'd started sprouting tails, how the heck should I know if turtles can be senseis? She hissed at him. All right, said the turtle, here comes Guy sensei There was a poof of smoke above the turtle and Team 7 and Rock Lee were now looking at a bigger version of Lee. The man was about two heads taller but he had the same bowl haircut and bushy eyebrows. Ah, I can see the flames of youth burning brightly in each of you. That guy is even lamer than the kid, said Sasuke with a bewildered look on his face. Had he turned to look at them, he'd have noticed Sakura and Naruto's expressions were the same. Super thick eyebrows. Super bowl cut. Was all Sakura could manage to get out. Those have got to be the biggest eyebrows I've ever seen, said Naruto. I think they might be alive. Lee turned around, rage and fury written all over his face. Hey, stop insulting Guy Sensei. He shouted at Team 7. With all these freaks showing up all over the place, how else are we supposed to react? shouted Sakura. What did you? he asked, shaking a fist. Obviously, Lee's infatuation with Sakura didn't stand up to the respect he had for Meta Guy. Lee, stop, said Guy with a small smile on his face. Yes, Guy-sensei, said Lee, 
Guy's expression turned serious as he shouted at Lee. You fool. He then punched Lee in the jaw, sending his mini clone soaring through the air. Lee, you, you are. Sensei. Said Lee as he stood up, tears streaming down his face. Lee, he shouted with tears streaming down his face. Guy Sensei. I, I. That's enough Lee. You don't have to say any more, as a sandy beach with a sunset appeared around them. Sensei. Lee shouted as he hugged Guy. Lee, wa. Sakura blurted out. Air. Naruto grunted. I, I, lost. Two. This guy. Sasuke stuttered. Yes. This is what youth is all about, said Guy, sensei. It's all right, Lee. Youth and mistakes go together, forget about it, consoled Guy. You, you are too kind, Guy sensei, sniffled Lee. Now, towards the sunset, I want 100 laps around the training grounds, said Guy pointing towards the mysterious appearing sunset. Lee straightened up, yes Guy sensei, let's go. Yes. What about Chunin exam? Asked Sakura, there isn't enough time. What, oh yeah, said Guy with a sheepish expression on his face. Lee, your punishment for starting a fight and attempting to use a forbidden technique will take place after the Chunin exams. Yes, said Lee saluting Guy. The call of youth, 500 laps, shouted Guy, striking a pose, so tell me, how is Kakashi sensei doing? You're his rival right? Asked Naruto, he is my eternal rival, said Guy. Yeah right, said Sakura disbelievingly. Sasuke didn't look like he believed Guy either, while Naruto was a bit undecided. At first glance Guy looked like a moron, but after watching Lee pick apart Sasuke, he knew looks could be deceiving. If Guy Sensei says, shouted Lee back, but he was stopped by Guy. Don't worry about it, Lee. Actions speak louder than words, Guy told him. Naruto and Sasuke's eyes widened as Guy simply disappeared. If I'm not mistaken, my records is 50 wins and 49 losses, in my favor. Team 7 each spun around, surprised looks on their faces. That means I am better than Kakashi. His speed. It's incredible, thought Naruto. He's faster than Kakashi, observed Sasuke. You see, isn't Guy Sensei incredible, shouted Lee. Sorry about Lee, I swear by this face, it will not happen again, Guy promised as he smiled at Team 7, his teeth sparkling in the light. You guys and Lee should be in the classroom soon. He threw a kanai and knocked the pinwheel off the wall releasing Lee's bandages. Naruto watched as Lee re-wrapped his hand. He doubted the others noticed it, but he saw the scars and the callus on Lee's knuckles. Even without using the jagan, he noticed the hard work and dedication that Lee put into his training. He's a true genius of hard work, thought Naruto. Good luck Lee, later. Guy shouted as he disappeared in a puff of smoke. Kuso, said Naruto more than slightly annoyed, I have to find someone to teach me that. Everyone in the room looked at Naruto oddly. Neither Sasuke nor Sakura could ever get Naruto's obsession with learning Shunshin no Jutsu body flicker technique, though Sasuke had to admit he wanted to learn it almost as badly as Naruto, not that he'd ever admit that out loud. Sasuke-kun, I shall say only one last thing, Rock Lee said as he went to leave, the truth is, while I have come here to test my abilities, I lied before. I am not the best genin Konoha has to offer. Though the strongest genin is most likely to be on my team. I have entered this exam to defeat him, but you are also one of my targets. Be prepared during the exam," Lee said as he jumped to the upper level and ran off to rejoin his teammates. Sasuke looked frustrated, so Sakura decided to try and comfort him, Sasuke-kun. Name and blood aren't everything are they Sasuke? Asked Naruto, his face the picture-perfect definition of seriousness. He tone was even, as he decided not to look or sound smug, despite the jagan's nudges. Naruto, shouted Sakura. Shut up. Sasuke growled through clenched teeth. Next time, I'll beat him. Sure. Although you just got your ass kicked, said Naruto with a deadpan expression on his face. Naruto, you. Sakura began to berate the blonde haired Triclops. Ignoring Sakura, Naruto looked at Sasuke. Did you see it? His hand? Judging by their looks of astonishment and confusion, neither had. Bushy brows must have been training hard. Day in and out. More so than any of us. That's all I meant. Sakura looked at Sasuke her eyes filled with concern as his fist tightened. 
The Chunin exams. They are becoming more interesting. Sasuke said with a determined smile. Sakura smiled as well and Naruto was now wearing a small smirk. Shall we get going? The three team mates walked down the halls, towards their destinies, not knowing the path of darkness that awaited them in the very near future. It didn't take Team 7 long to reach the real room 301. When they arrived, however, they were greeted by none other than their sensei, Hitaki Kakashi. Ah, I'm glad to see you made it as well, Sakura, he said lazily, reading his little orange book, Icha Icha Paradise Volume 3. You can now officially register for the Chunin exams. Kakashi informed them. At the looks of confusion, he continued, this exam can only be taken by teams of three. But you said it was up to us whether or not we wanted to take it or not, said Sakura. Yes, I did, Kakashi answered. You, you lied, asked Sakura uncertainly. Not exactly, Sasuke answered her, it was your choice whether you wanted to take the exam or not. But he didn't want either me or Naruto forcing you to take the exam. Exactly, said Kakashi, who added after seeing Naruto's betrayed look, even if you two wouldn't force her into taking the exam, she would have felt as if she was holding you back, and thus would have felt obligated to take the exam to keep from doing so. All of them accepted this explanation. So, if only Naruto and Sasuke came, then what would have happened? asked Sakura. I would have prohibited them from taking the exams and not allowed them entry into the next room, said Kakashi. But, each of you came here of your own free will. Well done, I am proud to have each of you on my team. He smiled, though you could only tell due to the curve of his only visible eye, and moved to allow them entry. All right, yelled Naruto, let's go. Kakashi watched them as they entered the room as the door shut. Wow, Naruto said breathlessly while Sasuke merely glared. Sakura looked astonished at the sight that greeted them. Th there's so many. Is everyone here taking the exam? Her nervousness only intensified as she glanced around the room, see could. They all be strong. She was broken out of her thoughts by something worse than the killing intent concentrated on her team, or at least in her opinion it was. Sasuke-kun, you're late, shouted someone as they glomped onto Sasuke's back. I've been eagerly waiting for you since I heard that I would be able to see you for the first time in such a very long time. It was none other than Yamanaka Ino, Sasuke's other number one fangirl and Sakura's own eternal rival. Sakura went from nervous to enraged faster than Naruto could eat a week's supply of Ichiraku's ramen for free. Get away from Sasuke-kun, Ino pig, yelled Sakura. Naruto just sighed while Ino shifted to Sasuke's arm. Oh. It's you Sakura, still as wide-foreheaded and ugly as usual, I see, the bubbly blonde girl said to her rival. What did you say? demanded Sakura. Ino's response was to simply stick her tongue out at Sakura. You guys are taking this troublesome exam too? asked another voice, this time a boy with a pineapple-shaped haircut who was standing next to a big-boned boy who was eating chips. They are Nara Shikamaru and Akamichi Choji respectively. It looks like we're all here said a fourth person, Inazuka Kiba. He had a dog sitting on the top of his head by the name of Akamaru. They went everywhere and did everything together. Naruto remembered when he, Kiba and Akamaru, Shikamaru, and Choji all used to cut school together. H hello. Naruto-kun. Whispered the girl of the third group. When Naruto looked over she quickly looked away and blushed. Naruto was puzzled by her reaction but he put it out of mind. She had always been like that and he didn't know why. Despite attempts to get her to open up, she would stutter at him when they spoke and she'd never look directly at him. Yes, for all the perceptiveness the dragon possesses, Naruto is still as oblivious as ever to certain things. Moving on. The third member was as silent and stoic as ever. He was probably the tallest person of all of them. Naruto couldn't remember much about him, other than the fact that the boy had always been silent. His name. Abarame Shino. You guys are here as well. Troublesome complained Nara Shikamaru. So all nine rookies are going to take the exam this year, observed Kiba. How far do you think we'll go, Sasuke? You seem awfully confident Kiba, said Sasuke. We've trained like hell, we won't lose to you, stated Kiba. Shut up. Underestimate any of us and you will lose, said Naruto defensively. S sorry, Naruto-kun. K Kiba-kun D didn't M mean it that way said Hanada pressing her fingers together, still not looking at Naruto. 
Hey you all should quiet down, said a silver-haired Konoha Jenin. You all are the nine recently graduated rookies right? You all need to get it into your heads that this isn't just a simple field trip. And exactly who are you to be telling us anything, demanded Ino. I am Yakushi Kabuto, he introduced himself. You're the guy who trains Haku at the hospital, said Naruto. Sasuke and Sakura looked surprised, while the others looked confused. Ah, he a friend of yours? Asked Kabuto, he has plenty of talent for medical jutsu, especially without any formal training. We met him on a mission, Naruto explained to the others. Anyways, Kabuto continued from where Naruto interrupted him. Look around, the ones behind you were from AIM and they have short tempers. Everyone here is very tense because it's right before the exam. I'm just warning you so you don't get picked on. Though I suppose it can't be helped with you all being rookies and all. It makes me remember the old me. Kabuto-san, right? Asked Sakura. Yes, answered Kabuto. Is this your second time then? Asked Sakura. No, replied Kabuto, it's my seventh. The exam takes place only twice a year and this is my fourth year. So that means you know quite a lot about the exam, right? She asked. Yes, he answered. So that means you're practically an expert, said Naruto. But, he hasn't passed it, Shikamaru added, to which Kabuto looked sheepish. Very true, Kabuto said. Ah, is the Chunin exam that difficult? This is getting even more troublesome, Shikamaru complained. Then perhaps you'd like some information then? Asked Kabuto as he pulled out a small deck of cards, these are ninja info cards. Ninja info cards? Asked Sakura. Put simply, I can burn information onto these cards using only my chakra. As he said this he kneeled and placed the deck on the floor. With them, I've managed to gather data on this exam for the last four years. I have around 200 cards. He flipped over the top card and they noticed it looked blank. It may look blank, but there is plenty of information stored in these cards, he then started twirling the card underneath his fingers. What are you doing? Asked Eno. I've made them so the information can't be viewed without my chakra, like this. He explained as he made a one-handed seal and there was a small puff of smoke where the card had been. When it cleared the rookies noticed that the card was no longer blank. Kabuto then gave a brief explanation of the purpose and politics of the Chunin exams. So, are there any cards with any detailed personal information on them? Asked Sasuke intrigued. Well, yes. Said Kabuto. Is there anyone that interests you? Yeah. How about Haku and Uchiha Sasuke? Asked Kiba. After all, that Haku guy had be strong if Kabuto spoke highly of him. Naruto said they had met on a mission, meaning Sasuke and Sakura also had to have been there as well. It was the perfect time to get some good information on the only member of Team 7 that was worth Kiba's time. After all, Haruno was a weak Sasuke fangirl and Naruto was the dobi of their class. No matter how far he had come, Kiba would still be far better than him. Sorry, but I don't have any information on Haku, I only have information on prospective Chunin and Haku was made one about a week after he came to the village, explained Kabuto. Sasuke smirked at Kiba, who looked frustrated at only getting half the information he wanted. While you're at it, do you have any info on Rock Lee, Sabaku no Gara, And Uzumaki Naruto, said Sasuke. Even Naruto looked perplexed at this. What gives Teme? We're on the same team. He asked Sasuke. Since we're already going to be looking at my stats, we might as well see how well you compare to me, said Sasuke with a smirk. After all, names and bloodlines aren't everything. Naruto raised an eyebrow at this. Like he can really compare to you, Sasuke kun, said Ino, you were the rookie of the year and he's just a dead last loser. Don't underestimate Naruto, said a scowling Sakura. Ino had to pinch herself to make sure it wasn't a hallucination. Ever since the academy, Sakura had always been one of the first to put down Naruto, especially since he was Sasuke's self-proclaimed rival. Kabuto watched with great interest as it seemed Team 7 had grown and changed the most since the three teams had interacted with one another, judging by the looks the rookies had on their faces. He's a lot stronger than anyone gives him credit for. Naruto gave Sakura a small smile, thanks, Sakura-chan. What had changed Team 7 so completely that Naruto and Sasuke had a serious rivalry and caused Sakura to defend Naruto? Also, Naruto wasn't bouncing across the room because of the small compliment Sakura had given him. 
They were not the same three that were nearly at each other's throats right after graduation. These were some of the thoughts that ran through everyone's minds. Hanada frowned, as it seemed someone else had managed to see just how strong her Naruto-kun was. She was happy to see that someone else was finally giving him the acknowledgement he always craved, but she remembered Naruto's crush on Sakura. She knew that if Sakura ever returned those feelings, she wouldn't stand a chance. Then again, Naruto's crush seemed to be tempered a bit, so maybe. Just maybe, there was still time. It's rare to see a newly formed team on such a level as yours, complimented Kabuto, only the Sanin shared a bond that's strong so early in their careers. Naruto grinned, Sakura blushed and even Sasuke smirked at the compliment. Now then, just remember that the information on the participants of the exam may not be perfect. Nevertheless, I've burned and saved them all. Though it's unfortunate you know their names, it kind of takes the fun out of it. Here we go. After sifting through the cards he pulled out four of them. Let's see. First up, Rock Lee. He held up the card which had the picture of the kid dressed in the green leotard, bowl haircut and bushy eyebrows. He's only a year older than you all, but this is also his first exam. 20 D ranked missions, 11 C ranked. His teammates are Hayuga Neji and Ten Ten and their sensei is made a guy. His taijutsu has increased very dramatically over the past year, though his other skills are abysmal. Kabuto then took a second card placing it over Rock Lee's and channeled his chakra into it. This time it showed a red-haired boy with black rings around his eyes and a gourd strapped to his back. Next up, Sabaku no Gara. Hum. Mission experience, 8C ranked missions and wow. AB ranked mission is a genin. He's a foreign nin and this is also his first exam so that's all the information I have on him. That's less than what we know already. Thought Naruto. I wonder what he has on me. Oh wait. It seems he's come back from every mission completely unscathed. Kabuto informed him. He did a B rank mission and came back unharmed? Asked Shikamaru astonished. B but how? Even with. Naruto stopped his sentence, but Sakura and Sasuke knew what he was going to say. Naruto had the power of the Kayubi no Kitsune, the most powerful demon in existence, at his disposal and even he had been injured, quite a few times if he was honest with himself. Well, now. Since you two wanted to compare, let's view the next two at the same time, said Kabuto. The remaining two cards were soon showing the pictures of a brooding Uchiha Sasuke and a grinning Uzumaki Naruto. Impressive for a genin, said Kabuto looking at Sasuke's card. Uchiha Sasuke prodigy of the Uchiha clan and one of three Sharingan users left. Kabuto said. Only Naruto wasn't confused by this information as Sasuke had told him back in wave that the man he wanted, needed, to kill, was his own brother. Team mates are Haruno Sakura and Uzumaki Naruto, and your sensei is the copycat nin, Hitaki Kakashi. 8D rank missions and well now. 1A rank mission. Not even Sabaku no Gara has one of those under his belt. The other genin looked impressed. Your chakra levels are above the average genins and even some chunins and you can perform a C-ranked katen jutsu. You're also one of the most skilled rookies ever to come out of the academy. Looking at Naruto's card his eyes widened. Interesting. He said as he showed the others. 8D rank missions, 1B rank, and 1A rank. My, my, you certainly have been busy. Kabuto said impressed. No known family, says here you entered the academy three years early but failed the final exam three times. Couldn't produce a single bunshin, but has mastered the cage bunshin no jutsu, shadow clone technique, a b rank kinjutsu reserved only for janin with high chakra levels. Both teams 8 and 10 were more than a little amazed at the info of Sasuke and Naruto. Sasuke's wasn't very surprising, though knowing your opponent has mid chunin level chakra and hearing about it were two different things entirely. Naruto's, however, was astonishing as he had even more chakra than Sasuke and knew a Jonin level forbidden jutsu. Added to the fact, he had completed one more mission, AB rank 1, than his teammates had. With both Sasuke and Naruto having that much power and skill between them and the camaraderie between the two of them and Sakura made them one of the most formidable teams in the exam. Naruto was relieved to hear that Kabuto had no information on him having the Jagan or his Gukuden jutsus, as he didn't want to reveal them yet. Hey, Dobi, what's with the extra B rank mission? asked Sasuke. 
Naruto cringed as he had not told either Sasuke or Sakura about the exact details of his graduation. Well, you see, Naruto began scratching the back of his head. I was feeling kind of down about not passing the exam, when Mizuki sensei offered me to let me take a second exam. All I had to do was sneak past some guards and get this scroll and learn a technique from it. Naruto explained, which I did, but I was found by Iruka sensei first. Well, it turns out Mizuki was really trying to steal the scroll. Iruka sensei got hurt fighting Mizuki so I saved him using the technique from the scroll. Cage Bunshin, Kabuto said, so you managed to not only steal the forbidden scroll of seals from the Hokage Tower, but learned Cage Bunshin in less than a day, while managing to defeat a Chunin Academy instructor. If you were the dead last of your class, then the rest of you must be incredibly impressive. The other rookies, even Sasuke and Sakura, were gaping at Naruto. Anyways, Kabuto continued on as the others began to get over their shock. Konoha, Suna, Aim, Kusa, Taki and Odo, these are the villages who have sent many talented ninjas here for this exam. Odo is a village of a small country that has just recently come to power, so there isn't much information on them. Either way, there are a lot of powerful ninjas from a lot of different places. I'm starting to lose confidence, mumbled Hinata to herself, Naruto, however heard her. So, in other words, the examinees here are all incredibly skilled and strong, observed Sakura. Yes, it's not just Lee and Gara or Naruto and Sasuke. All the people here are top elites from their respective countries. It isn't going to be easy. Meanwhile, Kakashi was thinking about his students who had just entered the room with the rest of the examinees for the Chunin selection exams. Despite what he had told Iruka and Iruka's admission that he might have been wrong about his former students, Kakashi himself couldn't help but be worried about them. Despite what I said about them, those fearless kids have to be pretty scared right now. Sakura observed the other genins seemed to be affected by Kabuto's words. They all seemed to lose confidence in themselves, even Sasuke and Naruto. Sasuke showed no outward appearance of being the slightest bit apprehensive, but Sakura could read it in his eyes. Naruto on the other hand seemed to be shaking a bit. Even Naruto, the stubborn Baka, is a bit nervous with all these people and the tense atmosphere. That fact alone made her start second-guessing herself as Naruto hadn't shown any fear in any situation ever since he made the vow of pain after the fight with the Demon Brothers. Not even Zabuza could make Naruto back down. Though I suppose it's not too surprising, after all, even if all of us are genins, we're still just rookies. She was about to try and raise Naruto's spirits when Naruto became a burst of energy and confidence. My name is Uzumaki Naruto, future Hokage of Konoha and I will not lose to any of you. He shouted at the entire room. Got that? Kakashi, who was still leaning next to the door, smiled and chuckled to himself. Perhaps I needn't worry so much after all. What is with him? Ino asked Sakura, pointing to Naruto. What's the point in provoking everyone? Don't ask me, exclaimed Sakura. Well, who else am I supposed to ask? Ino replied. Both Kunoichis glared at each other. Only Sasuke and Kabuto seemed to notice exactly what Naruto had done. With a simple statement Naruto completely broke all tension in the room and the others completely forgot about their fears. Every other genin was glaring at them. There is no way that guy could be like Gara. they're almost completely different, whispered Konkuro to Tamari. Perhaps. But looks can be deceiving, she told him, maybe he only appears to be an imbecile to hide how strong he truly is though she sounded more like she was trying to convince herself of that fact. Elsewhere, Team Guy was having a similar conversation. What is he thinking? Ten Ten whispered, he can't be that big of a baka. He's burning with passion, said Lee to his teammates. Well, it does appear that he's in good spirits, commented Neji, maybe you didn't beat them enough Lee. However, the auto team was more than a little annoyed with the rookies and the Konoha genin named Kabuto. Did you hear what he said? Asked the one-eyed Odo Nin, we're just a minor village from a small country. Let's play with them a bit, said the raven-haired female of the team. Yeah, they spoke of us as if we're just leftover ninja, said the one-eyed Odo Nin. Let's make him add this to his data. While the Odo Nin were putting their plot together, the Konoha rookies were unaware of what was about to happen. I'm not going to lose to any of you, that's big talk, commented Kiba. That Baka practically begged everyone in this room to be his enemy, said Shikamaru. Naruto, 
What the heck are you doing? Asked Sakura as she hit Naruto on the back of the head. Then she noticed the glares everyone was throwing at them, s sorry everyone. He sometimes gets carried away. No reason to take most of what he says seriously, she said to the room nervously. With the way everyone is glaring over here, I'm about to beat you up myself. She hissed at Naruto. Shall we? Asked the spiky-haired Otto Nin. Let's go, said the Otto Cyclops. Naruto's jagan flared for a moment as the Oto Nins began to move. Only Sakura and Ino noticed it as Naruto's back was to everyone else. His eyes widened as the Oto Nin were headed straight for them. Konkuro was about to pull the object off of his back when he was stopped by Gara. The spiky-haired Oto Nin then proceeded to throw two kanai at Kabuto, who easily dodged them. However, he was placed in perfect position for the one-eyed nin's follow-up attack which was interrupted by a kick to the head from Naruto. Each of the rookies, minus Sasuke and Sakura looked surprised. Naruto had never shown that much skill. Impressive Naruto-kun, but I assure you I could have taken care of myself. Even so, you're a Konoha nin, and whether we're against each other or not in this exam, we always take care of our own, Naruto said as he glared at the room, the Otto nin's in particular. You only got lucky because you attacked us by surprise, said the spiky-haired Nin. Isn't that exactly what you were trying to do? Asked Sasuke coldly, try something again and you'll find that you'll have more than just Naruto do deal with. Meanwhile, Ino and Sakura were having a short conversation. He knew that attack was coming, didn't he? Asked Ino accusingly. W what do you mean? Asked Sakura nervously. Don't play dumb Sakura, Ino hissed. They were moving fast enough that Sasuke-kun didn't have time to react when he saw them and Naruto had his back to them. There is no way even Sasuke-kun could have done that. And that glow. What was up with that? I I can't tell you, Sakura said nervously. Whatever it is he's hiding behind that headband of his is responsible for everything isn't it? The change of wardrobe, his and Sasuke being more friendly to each other, you defending him and him all of a sudden possessing all this skill when he was such a screw up at the academy. What the hell is going on Sakura? Ino demanded. He didn't even bounce off the walls when you defended him like he would have used to when we were at the academy. Listen Ino, Naruto might be annoying idiot, but he's still my teammate and I will not betray him by telling you anything he doesn't want you to know. Sakura hissed at her friend. Hokage-sama and Kakashi-sensei already know and that's all who need to know unless Naruto says otherwise, so if you want to know about it, ask him yourself. Fine, forehead girl, I'll drop it for now. But I do expect answers, said Ino coldly. Quite down, punks. A loud, authoritative voice boomed out. Everyone turned towards the voice, their attention no longer on the Konoha rookies, the Otto Nin, and Kabuto. Sorry to keep you all waiting, said a man wearing a black bandana with a Konoha Hite ITE and scars all over his face. He wore the standard grey uniform the other test proctors were wearing, except he was also wearing a black trench coat. I am the examiner of the first test of the Chunin selection exams. My name is Morino Ibiki, said the proctor. Now, don't think any of you can just do anything before the exam. Do you want us to fail you at the beginning of the exam? I apologize, I was merely excited with this being my first exam, said the one-eyed Otto Nin. Well, I suppose now is as good of a time to say this, said Ibiki. You are not allowed to fight each other during the exams unless given express permission by the examiners. Even if permission is given, you will not be allowed to kill each other. Pigs who go against me will fail immediately, is that understood? He did a quick scan of the room to let what he had just said sink in. Then he continued on with the introduction, now begins the first portion of the Chunin selection examinations. Turn in your applications. Then take one of these numbered tags, that will be your seating placement. After that, we will pass out the examination papers for the written exam. Kuso. Naruto hissed quietly to himself, a paper test. He clenched his fists tightly as one of the proctors held up a stack of papers and smirked. Rows of Chunin hopefuls filled the room. There were test proctors seated at either end of each row, all holding clipboards and awaiting further instruction. As each of them took their seats Morino Ibiki scanned the room and smirked evilly at them while directing a very subtle amount of killing intent at them. Naruto couldn't help but admire the man and his intimidation tactics. He certainly knew what he was doing. I'm separated from everyone I know, thought Naruto glumly. He was very depressed at the fact that he had to take a written exam as it had always been a weak point of his at the academy. 
He was mildly consoled by the fact Sasuke would have his own troubles with the exam but Sasuke always got some of the highest scores on the written exams at the academy, so he'd probably do fine here too. Sakura, on the other hand, was more than a bit of a know-it-all. While she may not be as powerful as either him or Sasuke Teme, her brains more than made up for it. What am I going to do? Several rows behind Naruto, Sakura was watching her blonde teammate on the verge of freaking out. Poor Naruto. This is the worst possible test for him. I wish I knew a way to help him. Naruto-kun? Asked a small, timid voice. Naruto turned to be faced with no other than Hayuga Hanada. Oh, hey Hanada, said Naruto thankful for the momentary distraction. Hanada looked away from him when he looked over at her. There was a slight pink tint on her cheeks. What do you need? He asked kindly. I I just. I just wanted. I just wanted to say. Good luck, and Naruto-kun, she said with a small smile, turning to face him slightly, let's do. Let's do our be best. Thanks, Hanada, good luck to you too, he said smiling, I didn't even notice her there. He thought while mentally frowning at his inattention. He really needed to work on mastering the jagan as its powers seemed to activate at random. Everyone's attention turned to the front of the room where Morino Ibiki was tapping the chalkboard with a medium-length piece of chalk. This first exam has some very important rules, he began, I will not answer any questions, so listen very carefully. Sakura looked at the man questioningly. Rules? And not answering questions? She thought trying to puzzle everything out. The first rule, everyone is given 10 points at the start of the exam. The exam only has 10 questions, each worth a single point, he informed them as he wrote on the chalkboard. This test will be based on a points deduction system. If you get one problem wrong, you lose one point. If you get three wrong, your score is reduced to seven. And if I get all of them wrong, I'm down to zero. Naruto thought grimly, he got a sinking feeling in his stomach. This would not go well for him, he was sure. Second rule, the pass-fail decision will be based on the total amount of points accumulated by your team, Ibiki continued. Kuso. Naruto thought to himself. Wait. Sakura yelled. What do you mean your team's total points? Shut up. There is a reason for this, so just shut up and listen. Demanded Ibiki loudly sending a small spike of killing intent at Sakura, making her flinch back instinctively. Now, let's move on to the next rule. A a reason. Sakura asked herself. If an examiner feels that you've done something to cheat or something similar during the test, you will be deducted two points for each time you are caught doing so. Ibiki told them with a smirk, in other words, there will be people forced to leave without their tests being graded. So there's a way to lose points without the test even being graded, Sakura thought to herself. Those who attempt to cheat without thinking carefully will only hurt themselves, he said, you are all trying to become chunins, if you are a ninja, you must act like a first-rate one. All right, calm down, thought Sakura to herself. Putting Naruto aside, both Sasuke-kun and I should do all right. We'll just have to make up for it if Naruto gets a zero. Also, if anyone on the team gets a zero, your entire team fails, Ibiki said, breaking Sakura out of her thoughts. Sasuke's eyes widened. What? What did you say? shouted Sakura. Kuso. Naruto cursed in his head. His hands already clenched tightly into fists. He felt the killing intent radiating off of both Sasuke and Sakura directed at him. And Naruto kun. Asked Hanada quietly, a slight blush across her face, as she noticed his slightly alarmed and frustrated expression on his face. The final question will be given 45 minutes after the exam begins, said Ibiki. You have one hour for the exam, begin. Tapping could be heard all around the room as dozens and dozens of prospective chunin began filling out the nine questions on their exam worksheet. Everyone could be seen working diligently and hard at work save one person who looked as if he'd been told that Ichiraku's ramen stand was closing for business forever. Sakura looked terribly frustrated. This isn't good. Even I can barely answer these questions. Naruto. Don't screw this up. She mentally berated her teammate despite the fact she couldn't hear him. Kuso. Naruto better not choke now. We've come too far. Thought a frustrated Sasuke who was having his own troubles trying to answer the questions on his test to no avail. He looked at Naruto and frowned at his teammate's frustrated unmoving form. This, is not good. I've gotten through plenty of situations like this before, thought Naruto, furiously trying to think of a plan to finish the test. 
I just need to keep calm and focus on answering the questions. I just have to really focus on the easy ones. Naruto's hands were on his head. He was on the verge of pulling his hair out. He had taken one look at all of the questions on the paper and realized he couldn't answer even a single one of them. His only option was to cheat and he knew that his only option was using the jagan, and though he could still see through his headband with it, prolonged use would incinerate it and even if he only used it sparingly, and the glow from using the jagan's powers would still be visible through the black headband. Naruto wasn't ready to give up his secret just yet as the revelation of the jagan would lead to questions that only he could answer and all of those answers led to the Kyubi no Kitsune. Sasuke wasn't having much luck either. As he read each question he realized more and more that it was possible only Sakura could actually answer the majority of the answers on the test and perhaps the Hyuga, the Abarame, and the Nara kids. This is a question involving gathering information based on indefinite conditions and physical analysis. Sakura thought to herself. She suddenly looked up at her blonde teammate. There is no way Naruto could answer these questions. In fact, I doubt many people here, other than myself, could actually answer these questions. All right. Next problem. Naruto thought, getting nervous, as he had already skipped over the first three questions again. All of these questions are rather difficult, thought Sakura to herself. Naruto wanted to shrink inside of himself, his mind furiously thinking of ways to make a quick escape so neither Sakura nor Sasuke could kill him for failing the test. Sasuke had a thoughtful look on his face. I see. He thought to himself. I don't understand even one of these questions bad bad very very bad naruto shouted in his head he was past panicking and well into hysteria as he had read through the sixth and seventh questions a second and third time trying to decipher their meaning what am i going to do this system almost promotes cheating sakura thought to herself i hope sasuke kun and naruto don't cheat we should be okay naruto isn't as stupid as people make him out to be she thought with a small smile wondering how Naruto was doing on his test. Naruto's knuckles were white from the grip he had on his pencil. He was gritting his teeth as he reread the 8th and 9th questions over and over again, hoping the answers would pop out at him. Stay calm. Deep breathes. You can do this. He kept repeating the same mantra over and over in his head. Perhaps. No. I can't risk getting caught. Sasuke was looking around the room at the proctors. They seem to be rather cautious. It's almost as if they're assuming we're going to cheat. He watched as a proctor marked down something on his clipboard. Someone was just caught. Getting caught was a two-point deduction. But why only two points? Normally you'd be thrown out for just being suspected of cheating. That's when Sasuke remembered Morino Ibiki's words at the beginning of the exam. Flashback. Those who attempt to cheat without thinking carefully will only hurt themselves, Ibiki said. You are all trying to become chunins, if you are a ninja, you must act like a first-rate one. End flashback, I see. Thought Sasuke as he reached an epiphany, this isn't a test of knowledge. The true purpose is to evaluate each person's information gathering skills using different methods of camouflage and concealment. See underneath the underneath as Kakashi sensei would always say. So he only wants us to not cheat without thinking things very carefully. To be like a first-rate ninja and not get caught. When put that way, the unusual point deduction system and the lenient two-point deduction rule make perfect sense. So exactly what is being tested? Not being caught be the person you're cheating off of, or the examiners while still getting the correct answers. Naruto you can do this. Just think underneath the underneath. It will cost you if you don't. Meanwhile, Naruto was almost shaking. Shit, he mentally shouted. His hand began to shake. The only way I can do this is if I use the jagan. Focus. Calm down. Try as he might, it was too late. His nervousness overrode everything and he couldn't concentrate enough to both use the jagan and fill out the exam paper. Sasuke was already making his plan of attack. If this is a test of one's information gathering skills there should be at least one person in here that already knows all of the answers, he thought as he scanned the room for his potential target. He noticed Sabaku no Gara was doing something odd with his sand while Kiba seemed to be communicating with his puppy. Seems like that loser actually can understand his mutt. Thought Sasuke who hadn't believed anywhere near half of Kiba's boasting in the academy as Kiba's list of techniques had been quite small and his animalistic taijutsu was no match for the Uchiha Sekundu, intercepting fist, while Kiba had been towards the top of the class in nearly every practical exercise, minus shuriken and kanai practice, 
he was nowhere near Sasuke's level. The one-eyed Otto Nin, Sasuke noticed, appeared to be concentrating. When the man didn't open his eye when he started writing Sasuke figured he was somehow using sound to copy off of his fellow examinees around him. Looking a few seats down from him, he noticed another examinee swatting away a bug. The fly then flew to the Abirame kid, who seemed to be able to communicate with it in a similar manner as the Inazuka and his puppy. Sasuke remembered they were teammates as well. It would be best to be cautious around them. Even with my Sharingan and Naruto's Jagan, we could have a tough time with them if they managed to catch us off guard. The Hyuga of the team wasn't as skilled as she could be and Kiba was a loudmouth, he was tough, but still a loudmouth, the Abirame, however, was nearly a complete unknown. Sasuke barely noticed the bug user in the academy and only knew a small amount of what the boy's bugs were capable of from what his uncle and brother had told him of the various clans of Konoha. Sasuke was confident he could beat the Abirame boy, but he knew after his fight with Rock Lee, it wouldn't be easy. Further study of the room revealed others' attempts at cheating. Sasuke was sure if he could see some of these attempts, the proctors could as well. It appears that even if someone is caught cheating, they aren't deducted any points as long as it's a chunin level attempt, observed Sasuke. Naruto was by far faring the worst of all the examinees. Thirty minutes into the test and he still had not written down a single answer. He was far too intimidated to try and cheat by normal methods and he was far too stressed and nervous to control the jagan effectively enough to even try to use it to cheat. He didn't know why, but he just couldn't let go of his secret. Time is running out. My only chance is to cheat. He grit his teeth, I just can't get caught as that would cause trouble for Sasuke Teme and Sakura-chan. And, if I fail, we all fail. Naruto-kun. He heard a soft, gentle voice whisper. He hid his shock the best he could as he slightly turned his head and cut his eyes towards the pale lavender eyes of Hayuga Hanada. She was blushing slightly, I'll show why you my test. Why would she? Naruto thought, puzzled by the heiress actions. Hanada isn't the type to try and trick people. Naruto then whispered to her, Hanada, why are you trying to help me? Hanada's blush deepened as she clenched and unclenched her fists. She was staring intently at her test, avoiding Naruto's gaze. Well, she whispered, even Naruto was barely able to hear her soft voice, I. She gulped, she began to sweat slightly under Naruto's careful gaze. I I. Just don't want. Why you tt2. G go away. Hanada gasped as Naruto looked at her questioningly and turned towards her a bit more, her blush becoming a bit more pronounced. Hanada was thinking furiously at what she should, or rather, could tell her longtime crush. You know. The nine of us. W were the only rookies. And everything I is s so uncertain. Thanks Hanada. Whispered Naruto gratefully, I'm sorry I doubted you. Naruto gave her a small smile, to which she looked down sharply continuing to blush. Looks like we're saved. He thought, relieved he wouldn't be the one holding back Sasuke and Sakura. Hanada subtly shifted her paper towards Naruto, who was shooting quick glances at it. Before Naruto could get a good look at the paper, however, a kanai whizzed in front of his face, grazing the tip of his nose. Hanada and Naruto looked behind them as the kanai embedded itself in the test paper of the guy sitting behind them. What is the meaning of this? He shouted, obviously freaked out as he stood. A spiky-haired proctor who Sakura, Sasuke, and Naruto all noticed looked awfully similar to the kid who was pushing around Rock Lee and attacked Sasuke earlier smirked, you screwed up five times. You fail. What? He shouted. Take your teammates and get out of here, the spiky-haired proctor ordered. Now. His teammate stood up as the Chunin hopeful stood there in shock. In the seat in front of him, Naruto was wide-eyed and nearly hyperventilating. He flinched when he heard the next words. Number 23, fail. Numbers 43 and 17. Fail. Naruto then began to look around the room as others stood up and left. Two proctors dragged out one genin who was refusing to leave, while Asuna genin stood up and furiously demanded if they had any proof he had cheated five times. Can you really expect us to believe you are capable of watching over this many people? He disappeared in a blur as a Konoha Nin elbowed him in the neck and forced him to a wall. He had bandages covering the upper part of his head and a hit a ITE over where his eyes would be. Listen up. We are the Chunins that were chosen to watch over you punks during this part of the exam, he said tauntingly, we are the elites, so to say. So we don't miss even a single thing you do. My strength is more than enough proof. 
he said confidently as he released the Suna Nin, who immediately slumped to the floor, gasping for air. Naruto was paralyzed in fear. Naruto kun. Hanada whispered to him, getting the blonde haired Genin's attention. Hurry, look. Naruto then began to become ultra self conscious of his surroundings. It took great effort not to flinch back, as if burned, when one of the proctors looked in his direction. Hanada. I can't, he said softly, besides, a great ninja like me doesn't need to cheat. He said with a small fake smile that, though he didn't know it, she saw straight through. B but. Naruto kun. Hanada tried to reason with him. I can't let you get into trouble for helping me cheat, he said seriously. Hanada stifled a gasp as her blush deepened. Naruto kun. She thought, she sat there staring at him for a few moments, lost in her own world when she finally remembered where they were. I I'm ss sorry. I did something unnecessary. Naruto chuckled a bit. Don't worry about it. Thanks anyway. Hanada chan. He whispered. He then looked at his still blank test, mentally berating himself for being incredibly stupid. Had he not been so focused on himself and trying to figure out what he was going to do, he missed Hanada's reaction. Her face was completely red and it was taking insane amounts of willpower to not faint in Naruto's presence. He see called me H Hanada chan. A and doesn't W want me T to get in trouble. Stupid, 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 was the mantra that kept running through Naruto's head. Around the room, Others began furiously working on their test. Sakura began breaking down and calculating each problem, while Hayuga Neji activated his Byakugan and Sasuke activated his Sharingan. I just need to copy his every movement, thought Sasuke as he intently watched his target and furiously filling out his test. My hand is moving without hesitation, he smirked, I got him right away. Several rows back from Sakura, she was being watched by her longtime rival, Yamanaka Ino. Ino smirked, it looks like Sakura is about finished. I can't help but acknowledge that the wideness of the forehead of hers and intelligence are incredible. Thought Ino, you should be thankful for being my target for this technique. The blonde haired, purple clad Kunoichi then did a few hand seals. Shintenshin no Jutsu. Mind body switch technique. Her spirit seemed to fly out of her body and straight into Sakura's. Ino slumped onto her paper. The only one who seemed to catch the movement was quite a few seats down from Sakura. Looks like Ino used that jutsu. How troublesome. Better finish this test or Ino will become even more troublesome than my Ka San. Choji, who also wasn't too far away, thought to himself. Just can't beat that technique of Ino's. Now I just have to wait for Shikamaru to do his thing. Sakura then confidently smirked, a look very reminiscent of Yamanaka Ino. Sakura, I've slipped myself into your mind for a while, now I just need to quickly get the answers. Figures she'd be able to answer all these questions. Number 59 fail, shouted one proctor. Numbers 33 and 9, fail, shouted another. That's the 13th team that's failed, thought Kabuto as he continued answering the questions on his test. 41, fail, shouted a proctor. Ibiki just stood in the front of the room impassively as the babysitters began failing more and more Chunin hopefuls. Numbers 35 and 62, fail. Ibiki couldn't help but be impressed by the way the Suna Nin, Gara, was handling himself. He then remembered that Hitaki Kakashi had said about the kid also being a Jinchuriki like the Uzumaki kid. Taking a quick glance at the said Genin, Ibiki was far from impressed. The kid looked as if he had an aneurysm. He looked as if he'd break under the strain of the pressure at any moment. He couldn't help but think Kakashi's unwavering faith in his team was a bit misplaced, but then again the Haruno girl and the Uchiha prodigy seemed to be having little problems with the test. Excuse me, said Asuna Chunin hopeful. He wore a black jumpsuit with cat ears and a good deal of face paint. I need to go to the bathroom. A proctor stood and handcuffed Konkuro, as the rules state, I'll have to accompany you to the bathroom. I suppose that makes sense, said Konkuro as he was led out of the room. Gara merely grunted at his older brother's minor disruption. Kuso. Forty minutes have passed. Thought Naruto intensely watching the clock. His test was still blank. Twenty minutes left. I don't have a choice but to bet everything on the answer of the final question. Morino Ibiki smirked at the remaining teams. Looks like we've dropped all of the incompetent ones. I will now give you the final question. Naruto gripped tightly onto his pencil. I I can do this. All or end nothing. 
Took long enough, thought Sasuke. Sakura looked smug, knowing that she could easily answer this as she did the others, finally. Elsewhere, a blonde Suna Nin was wondering where her other brother was. Konkuro, you'd best hurry back. If he gives us the tenth question, you'll be unable to help us out. Before I do, however, there's one thing I must tell you, said Ibiki in a low voice, the tension mounting as he hit them with small amounts of killing intent. It was affecting them all more than it should as they were completely focused on him. There is a special added condition to the final question. The door in the back of the room opened and the Suna Nin who had gone to the bathroom and the proctor he had left with had returned, just barely in time. You're lucky, Ibiki said to Konkuro, your puppet show didn't have to go to waste. Konkuro inwardly cringed, while Ibiki just smirked. H he knows about Karasu. He thought to himself. Well, sit down, Ibiki told the Suna Nin. As he passed by his blonde teammate and sister, he dropped a small object next to her test, which she immediately, but subtly, covered with her hand. I shall now explain. This is a hopeless rule. Ibiki began to explain. Many of the prospective Chunin looked confused. With our subordinates gone, it sure is quite boring, said one Hitaki Kakashi in a lazy tone. I'm sure we'll be busy soon enough, said Serutobi Asuma, Jonin instructor of Team 10, the Ino Shika Cho group. Much to the distaste of the third member of their little get-together he was smoking a cigarette. He wore a simple Jonin outfit, much like Kakashi's, except without the mask. Oh, why do you say that? asked Kakashi with a lazy drawl. The first examiner for this year's Chunin exam is Morino Ibiki, said Asuma with a small smile on his face. Kakashi's eye widened momentarily with recognition of the name. So, it appears that the first exam will be a tad bit difficult this year. He wondered how his students were doing at the moment. So they had to pick that sadist, eh? Sadist, asked a beautiful woman with ruby-colored eyes and a dress that looked like she was wrapped in bandages. She had a single red sleeve covering her right arm and both hands were wrapped in bandages. She was Yuahi Kuranai, Jonan instructor of Team 8, the reconnaissance team. She had the Hayuga, Inazuka and the Abarame under her tutelage. Kuranai, you're still a rookie Jonan, so it's understandable you don't know, said Asuma. Who is he? asked Kuranai. A pro, Kakashi answered. A pro. A pro? A pro of what? she asked, already dreading the answer. Asuma sucked on the cancer stick, and let out a puff of smoke. He's a tokabetsu janin, whose specialization is torture and interrogation. What? asked a shocked Kuranai. Although he won't be physically torturing them in the exam, I can guarantee the kids are feeling a large degree of mental stress from his interrogation tactics, Asuma informed her. He is. The Ambu's torture and interrogation squad leader. I can just imagine what they're going through he said with a small smile. Don't underestimate those kids. They're a lot stronger than you think, said Kakashi, though he didn't outwardly show it, not even his one visible eye gave any indication, from the tone of his voice, one could tell he was smirking. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Naruto that pulled them all through this first test. The Kayubi kid? asked Asuma, both he and Kuranai flinched at the look Kakashi had given the smoker. He was the dead last at the academy. Certainly he couldn't have improved so much in so little time. Asked Kuranai. I'll admit, academically, he's still scrapping the bottom of the barrel, however, he always performs best under heavy amounts of pressure and when he's being underestimated. I'm sure Ibiki is giving him both in heavy doses, explained Kakashi, Naruto's guts, combined with Sasuke's inherent skill, and Sakura's intelligence make them a very formidable team. I have very little doubt my team will make it all the way to the final exam. A hopeless rule? Naruto mentally asked himself. First, you are all going to choose whether or not you wish to take the final question, Ibiki told them. This announcement shocked everyone in the room. Choose whether or not to take the final question? Sasuke asked himself. The blonde Suna Nin gasped. Choose? So what happens if we choose not to take the tenth question? Simple, said Ibiki still smirking confidently. Your test points will be reduced to zero and you fail, along with your fellow teammates. What's the meaning of that? asked a random Genin. Of course we'll take it, shouted another. Teammates also failing is bull, complained a third. And here is another rule, said Ibiki as he closed his eyes. The shouting Genin all became silent. What, another rule, what gives, 
Sakura asked herself. If you choose to take the final question and you get it wrong, said Ibiki, you will forever lose the privilege of ever taking the Chunin selection exam again. What kind of crap rule is that? shouted the familiar voice of Inazuka Kiba. There are people in here that have taken the exams before. Akamaru barked as if to emphasize what Kiba was saying. Ibiki seemed amused by Kiba's outburst and started chuckling. You're unlucky this year. Because this year is my first year as the exam proctor and I make the rules. That's why I'm giving you all one last chance to back out now. Those who are not confident can choose not to take the question and take the next Chunin exam, or the one after that. Ibiki started laughing. Sakura on the other hand, was quite panicked. So if one person decides not to take it, all three fail. If someone chooses to take the question and answer incorrectly, that person will never rise above Genin. Either way, it's not good. Naruto tensed in his seat, while Hanada gave him a worried look. The fear on his face was enough to make her lose confidence in herself as she knew more than anyone how Naruto never gave up, no matter how much the odds were against him. Let us begin, said Ibiki. Those who will not be taking the tenth question, raise your hands. After we confirm your numbers, you will be free to go. What kind of question is it? If I get it wrong, I'll be stuck as a genin forever. I don't want that. But if I don't take it, Sasuke and Sakura chan will fail with me, and I can't let that happen. Naruto thought to himself. I'm not raising my hand, I'm confident enough that I can get the problem right, Sakura thought to herself. But, Naruto, please raise your hand. We can help you the next time. Suddenly the tense atmosphere was broken, the tacky nin sitting next to Naruto. He had decided to not take the next question. This set off a whole chain of people who decided not to continue on. One by one, people started to get up. The proctor called out the numbers of their teammates and they left in groups of three. Naruto began to become more depressed. Naruto, Sakura thought, why aren't you raising your hand? She watched him shaking. He, she thought back to his reasons for staying in the exam. Flashback. I'm the elite ninja who will receive the title of Hokage one day. Naruto said with enthusiasm, the name is Uzumaki Naruto, remember it. Flashback, shut up. I am prepared to go through anything to become Hokage, Naruto yelled in defiance. Flashback with a certain fire in his eyes he shouted, I'm going to become greater than all of the Hokages. I'm going to make the villagers acknowledge my existence. Flashback Naruto stared back at the grave a moment longer, before speaking again. All right. I'm going to follow my own Nindo. I'm going to run straight down the path where I'm not going to regret anything. Flashback. Just like I was to be seen as a hero. Naruto asked bitterly, like anyone really followed that request. Flashback. Tell me Sakura-chan. How would you like it if the man you looked up to more than anyone else? the one you respected above all others, was responsible for nearly every horrible thing that has ever happened to you? Asked Naruto angrily, that even after all of that, you come to find out he was your own father. Flashback, Naruto's father, was also my sensei. Kazama Arashi, the Yandaimi Hokage. Kakashi informed them. Flashback, let me go, I'm gonna kick his ass, yelled Konohamaru. Let. Me. Go. I can't let him get away with making fun of the boss. Sasuke raised an eyebrow at the small boy's behavior, while Sakura looked shocked at the sheer amount of protectiveness and devotion he had for Naruto, while Haku merely smiled at the boy. Haku squatted down to Konohamaru's level and smiled. I assure you Konohamaru-san, we do not wish Naruto-sama any ill will. He's just down from some things he found out today and we wish to cheer him up. Do you know where we can find him? Konohamaru calmed down visibly. Enough that Udon and Moegi let go of their leader. He still glared at Sasuke suspiciously. Turning back to Haku, I believe you, but if you hurt Ni Chan, I will kick your ass. His glare was mostly directed at Sasuke when he said this. Flashback Konohamaru was about to protest, but Naruto quickly cut him off. I promise, Konohamaru. I vow on my dream to be Hokage and our friendship, I will tell you eventually, just not right now. Flashback. Worry not Kakashi, he bears no grudge against you, said Sandame, still, I think it's time to find Naruto and show him that you're still his friends. While you may not be the closest of groups, he has found a measure of acceptance with each of you and he fears losing that more than anything. End flashback, he. He's always going on about becoming Hokage like an idiot. 
always shouting about gaining acceptance from everyone, wanting to be respected. So he, he wouldn't be so alone, thought Sakura sadly. Flashback, the solitude. Sasuke interrupted her. What? Sakura asked, genuinely confused. The pain. You can't even compare it to the level where your parents get mad at you. He scolded her. You're annoying. Flashback end. I'm sorry Naruto. I won't let you give up your dream. Not for us. Not for me. Sakura sadly thought, with a determined look on her face. I'll help you achieve your dream. I won't let you throw it away. Sakura hesitantly began to raise her hand when she suddenly saw something she'd thought she'd never ever see. Uzumaki Naruto, hopeful future Hokage of Konoha, was giving up. She watched in shock as Naruto's hand was shakily raised in the air. Naruto. Hanada and Sasuke were both equally shocked. Hanada found her whole world crumbling. Naruto never gave up, he kept on trying long after others would have. He was brave and strong, everything she wasn't. Despite the cruel glares given to him by the villagers, he always pushed on with that fake smile on his face, never once giving up on his dream of becoming Hokage. If he couldn't do it, if he didn't have the confidence, who was she to think she could carry on when Naruto was so much stronger than herself? And Naruto kun, she thought sadly. Sasuke was certain he was seeing things. As much as he'd hate to admit it, Naruto easily had the potential to become his equal with the use of his Keke Jenke. He remembered what Sakura said about the power she felt in Wave Country, the old man, Tazuna even felt it. In terms of raw power, Naruto could easily top everyone in the room, all he had to do was refine his skills and learn to control that power. He felt betrayed. He kept everyone at arm's length. Knowing that in the end all that mattered was your own strength, that family was a weakness that would only serve to hold you back. A luxury, a comfort he could not afford while Itachi was still alive. Without Naruto, how would he be able to gauge his own strength, his own power? Kuso. Sasuke mentally cursed. Just as I thought. Just Kakashi overestimating his team's confidence and abilities, thought Ibiki dismally. Ibiki, he. He understands human psychology, said Asuma, taking a drag from his cancer stick. The scariest part about him, is that he can drive a person into a corner mentally, control his mind, and bully him. He can find a person's weakness and bring it to the surface. Naruto's hand balled up into a fist. Only Ibiki briefly saw the brief flash of the jagan underneath the headband, as the other proctors were looking for his number and the numbers of his teammates. He involuntarily stepped back, but managed to hold in a surprised gasp. Naruto brought his fist down and slammed it into the desk, making nearly the whole room jump and look at him in surprise. Screw you. I'm not going to run away, he shouted with an angry expression on his face, I'll take this problem. Even if I'm stuck as a genin forever, I'll still become Hokage. I'm not scared, he shouted as he stood up angrily facing down Morino Ibiki. Believe it. Sasuke smirked. He definitely has spirit. You just don't know when to quit, do you Naruto Baka? Sakura thought with a small smile on her face. Ibiki wasn't sure to be proud of the kid or bash him over the head. All of those who were about to leave were no longer even considering it. He's turned the whole room around with that outburst of his. Just like his old man. He forced a scowl on his face. I will ask just once more. This is the choice that will impact your life. If you want to quit now, now is your chance. He sent another wave of killing intent at the room, still subtle, but greater than the others he had sent out previously. He and Naruto had continued their staring contest. Naruto smirking the entire time. I'm not going to take back my words. That's my Nindo. Ibiki scanned the room. The entire room was generating an aura of complete confidence, all centered around Uzumaki. He looked at the Jinchuriki's teammates. The Haruno girl was smiling, and the Uchiha prodigy was smirking. The Hyuga girl next to the vessel was looking at him with approval and awe. The Nara boy was also smirking in the corner and Guy's student Rock Lee had an uncharacteristic cocky grin on his face as well. Even the Yamanaka girl was looking at the vessel in interest. The only person who didn't seem affected at all was the impassive Suna Nin, the other Jinchurki of the group. Even the other proctors looked pleased. Interesting kid. Thought Ibiki, he's risen all of their confidence levels. Wiped out all uncertainty. 78 students. 26 teams. Far more than expected. Doesn't look like I should wait any longer. Each of the proctors gave their signal, well then. Since you all seem so determined. 
Everyone here. Passes. He finished with a grin. He watched as each of the examinees registered his words. One by one he saw the looks of shock, disbelief and even anger. Mentally, he counted down in his head, three, two, one, wait, what's that supposed to mean? shouted the pink-haired Haruno girl. To be continued. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.